is Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily with Andrew Hustler Patterson and Michael Remus. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Nashville in the NHL Draft. Andrew Patterson, Michael Remus with you to kick off what should be a very eventful week around the league, but especially for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, it's been uh, a pretty crazy 24 hours getting here, but uh, we're here right now working through a few technical limitations. We're doing the uh, the show today from the Media Hotel, sort of TBD. If we can get a better spot to do that over the next couple of days, we will, of course, be on the draft floor uh, with reports throughout the evening on Wednesday and then finishing it up on Thursday for rounds two through seven. Uh, there's a lot to get to coming out of the weekend. Uh, of course, we had uh, plenty of rumors uh, around what may or may not, not happen with the Winnipeg Jets and specifically Pierre-Luc Dubois. Plenty of smoke around the Los Angeles Kings. Some more reports today that, um, you know, that there's still work to be done and that maybe the Montreal Canadiens have re-entered the chat. We're going to find out more about that. Now, David Pagnotta from the fourth period, who had been at the forefront, obviously he and Dennis Bernstein well connected with the Los Angeles Kings with some reports earlier on the weekend. Dave is going to join us uh, live here probably in about an hour. Uh, but before then, we're going to have Jeff Hamilton on the program. And Ken Weave, who had some great reporting on the weekend, is also going to join us actually coming up in just the next few minutes here on the program. Uh, of course, our shows at Nashville all week long have to first start the program out by thanking our great partners over at CoolBet. Get on over to CoolBet right now. We've got all sorts of draft props. Uh, I did get on that Zach Benson in the top eight at plus 200. That's still hanging out there right now. Um, but it's very interesting to see how some of the odds have changed. Before was a lock that Adam Fantilli was the number two pick. That's come down a little bit. Um, so you can take a look at that at CoolBet. Hoping to have Pat Gregoire of CoolBet join us in the final half hour of the program uh, for a little bit of an update on all of that. Uh, but of course, CoolBet presenting these shows, but uh, the uh, sponsors behind us, including CoolBet, that makes this show happen each and every day for all of you, including uh, Modern Man, Aquatech, Modern uh, Manitoba Battery, Canadian Club, Vita Health Fresh Market, Wallace & Wallace, F Apparel, Nick & Nicky DQ, the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, nice series win on the weekend, AS Assiniboia Downs back in action tonight, Breezy Bend, Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge, Little Brown Jug, our friends at Boston Pizza, Royal Sports, Consolidated Supply, and of course our great partners over at Princess Auto. Uh, so we're going to do this a little differently today. I'm going to move our guests up a little bit more. We're expecting Ken Weeb coming up in the next few minutes. Um, and we'll get Michael Remus in here as soon as he's able to join. Lots going on behind the scenes right now. Uh, but, of course, our focus right now, uh, in addition to all the trade wins around the National Hockey League and specifically on those Winnipeg Jets, of course, Connor Hellebuck still is a member of the Winnipeg Jets. And I know many of you have already been putting together all sorts of trade scenarios as to what Hellebuck would bring back to the Winnipeg Jets. But right now, he's up tonight at the NHL Awards here in Nashville for his second Vesna Trophy. He, uh, I, I would say the odds are long for Hellebuck to win this one. Uh, Linus Olmark had uh, just that brilliant season along with the Boston Bruins who smashed regular season records. And this is a regular season award. Uh, and Ilya Sorokin of the New York Islanders had a heck of a season as well. Um, but Kelly up for that award tonight, as well as uh, the rest. We'll certainly get to that a little bit later on with Ken. Uh, Remo, how are you doing? You, uh, you, you're you yeah. able to breathe a little uh, bit? You know, uh, you've done some yeoman's work. We did have to navigate quite a few things that, uh, frankly, didn't entirely expect uh, that would be on our way. But uh, apparently, we are on the air right now, and it looks like there's a lot of people in chat uh, with I us. believe we are streaming. People are in chat. Uh, this is pretty wild, so... Thanks, everyone. We had a record number of people waiting for us before we had even hit start. We were uh, a couple minutes late, unfortunately. Yeah, this is really exciting to be here, and uh, I'm I don't know, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens this week. Thankfully, there were no trades while we were while we were flying down here, but it sounds like the other teams, Jets, Kings, were flying here too, and it seems like that's the big rumor. Pierre Luc Dubois uh, to the Kings that is swirling around. Yeah, and. and and listen, I mean, I know I can just imagine what the chat's uh, reading like right now because 
whenever you get these reports from very reputable people, um, you know, it inevitably gets fans um, hopes up uh, and it gets their expectations up that things are going to happen very, very quickly or very soon. Um, there still is two days before the draft. Now, listen, I am with everyone. The sooner the better for this Dubois deal, assuming that it happens. Because there's a number of other things that need to happen for the Winnipeg Jets or would preferably happen this week, I think. And that includes Connor Hellebuck's status, which, listen, if he's not re-signing with the Winnipeg Jets, um, you know, you've got to make that move. And I'm not sure there's a better opportunity to do that than this week here in Nashville before we get to free agency on the 1st. Things get harder to pull off after July 1st. Um, but it's quite clear from everything that we've heard, and again, this is... I mean, there is an element of speculation to it, but I mean, I'll, I'll rely on a number of people that are very reliable that, um, you know, the focus right now is on Dubois. Where does that leave Hellebach? And we haven't heard a lot of Mark Shifley, which is, you know, another one of the things that we'll talk about with Ken coming up. But Ken had some great reporting on it might be more than Dubois. And we are hearing that. I mean, when it comes to this, th these discussions between the Winnipeg Jets and the Los Angeles Kings, this isn't just a pure Luke Dubois trade. It sounds like, and we'll get Ken to expand on his report, of uh, a member of the Winnipeg Jets organization the last couple of years that could very well find himself also on the way to Los Angeles, if, of course, this does break. But we'll get the latest from Ken. Jeff Hamilton's going to join us as well, and we are expecting a little bit later on today David Pagnotta of the fourth period to jump in with a lot less live here in Nashville. Uh, just before we bring in Kenny, I do want to thank our friends at Modern Man Barbershops for their great support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. Uh, don't forget, Modern Man Barbershop now has eight locations in Winnipeg, including their newest locations on either Pembina Highway or Plessy Road, offering a variety of grooming services, including haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. Book your look via modernmanbarbershop.com. And hey, it's hot outside here. It's going to be hot coming up into the weekend. Why not make 2023 the year you take the plunge with AquaTech? Visit aqua-tech.ca to design your own custom pool. The AquaTech team can provide on-the-spot pricing from designers as well as financing options that suit you. And uh, renos, whole home renos start with AquaTech as well with thousands of renos as their foundation. Let them upgrade any space in your home. AquaTech's ready to make your reno dreams a reality. Learn more about design, pricing, and financing options at aqua-tech.ca. And hey, we do have a long weekend coming up. Of course, we just had that great boat battery blowout sale over at Manitoba Battery. And here's the thing, folks. A lot of you taking time on your holidays to make the most of the summer. Um, as it doesn't stay long, and we got you know you have to max it out, especially with the family and the kids getting out of school. Well, Manitoba Battery not only has the best prices on batteries for whatever you need for your summer fun, but they're also going to save you time, time that you can spend with your family because they're going to deliver that battery to you anywhere in the city of Winnipeg for free with all purchases of over 60 bucks. So much to get to when it comes to summer uh, boats, sea dews, lawn, tra lawn trailers, and more ATVs. Find out more at manitobabattery.com. Of course, you can see them at 1026 Logan Avenue as well. Uh, you'll be shopping local. You'll be saving money. You'll be saving time as well. Shout out to Donnie and his great staff over at Manitoba Battery. And just before we bring in Kenny Weeb, <clears throat> cheers to our friends at Canadian Club. I know there was many of you enjoying Canadian Club and Ginger Ales last Thursday at IG Field. Of course, Canadian Club, the official spirit of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Very rarely, that might have been the highlight of the game because the Bombers got whooped. We will talk Bombers a little later on. Looking forward to get Hammer's take on that. But of course, our focus right now is on the National Hockey League. And as we continue Winnipeg Sports Talk at the NHL Draft in Nashville, brought to you by CoolBet, let's bring in Sportsnet.ca's Ken Weeb. Weaver, what is up, man? It's great to kick off a very important week with one of our most important guests. Thanks for doing this uh, on a little short notice. I know we'll probably catch up later on, but you had some great reporting on the weekend and uh, wanted to start with local guys to give us uh, you know, a bit of a, a buzz to our listeners as to what is happening around this. How are you doing? Doing tremendous, Huss. Uh, glad you made it there safely. I uh, had previously hoped to be on a seat beside you uh, on that flight from Fargo to Nashville. Still but, outraged, but uh, we won't uh, get into that. Another time, yeah. another time, another time. But yeah, certainly an interesting weekend for sure. We're waiting for some news. Sunday was sort of a, 
sit by the computer type of day, uh, waiting for further activity. Uh, we know that there's lots, uh, lots of chatter around Pierre-Luc Dubois right now, and we know that that will continue until a trade gets consummated. Uh, the latest on that front is you know, LA looks to be the front runner. Will Montreal swoop in and finally make a legitimate offer? I guess that's what Kevin Cheveldayoff and company are, are waiting to hear. Uh, right now, I would say the Kings certainly, you know, based on what we've been hearing in terms of players that are being discussed, Gabe Velarde sounds like the centerpiece. And, you know, having done a lot of research on him over the course of the weekend, sounds like a player who... Uh, would fit in quite nicely to what the Jets are trying to get accomplished here. A guy going to turn 24. He's the 11th overall pick in 2017. Has dealt with some injuries in his history, but uh, a guy who's big and strong and is hard on the puck, has an incredible shot, does a lot of scoring in tight. Uh, high character player, very dedicated, and you know someone who needs a new contract as a restricted free agent, but he's also a guy that it would have four years of team control. And us, we've been spending the last two and two or three months talking about those types of players being the targets for the Jets here as they try this reload or retool on the fly here. So uh, Velarde makes a lot of sense. He would be the centerpiece. I know a lot of people were hoping that maybe Quentin Byfield would be involved, uh, having spoken with a lot of people in the last couple of days on that front as well. Doesn't sound like the Kings are quite ready to move Byfield in any package. Uh, there was a lot of buzz around him at the at the deadline last year. Similar now, but uh, they just believe in his skill set and high ceiling. Uh, a couple years younger than Velarde and, you know, spent some time last year playing on the left side with Andre Kopitar. So I don't see Byfield being involved in this package if the two teams can get it to the finish line. Uh, Alex Iafalo would qualify as the salary dump, uh, if you will, but this is not just the Jets adding a salary. This is a guy who is a uh, hardworking, I mean, let's call him right now a middle six player. Uh, let's use that as a term, you know, averaging maybe close to a half point per game. Uh, just under that during the course of his career. He's a guy who plays incredibly hard, and uh, we know the Jets would have a good idea of what kind of player he is, Huss, given his time at the University of Minnesota Duluth, where he was teammates with Neil Pionk, Tom, uh, Dominic Toninato, and Carson Kuhlman. Uh, so I imagine they would know, you know, outside of him actually just being in the NHL for the last, you know, four years and change as well, over five years. So uh, interesting player, high character guy, good winger. Uh, you know, I'm guessing one of his first acts would be to apologize to Josh Morrissey. I think he wasn't he the guy that gave him the cross check in the face. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, a guy who plays really hard and I uh, spent some time speaking with Mark Spector, my colleague at Sportsnet yesterday. Uh, he's He's been covering both series between those two teams in the last two years. And he's a guy who said flat out, I follow is a guy you notice, not just because he's physical, but... I think he's got five playoff goals in his uh, stretch of time here as well. So a guy that you notice because he's been productive. Uh, so, I mean, I think, you know, again, not finalized by any stretch. And uh, it's complicated given the fact that uh, Dubois will need an extension uh, of some kind. And, you know, my colleague Elliot Friedman said this morning uh, that, you know, is there an opportunity potentially that Dubois would, knowing that the situation could benefit both him and the franchise, would he be willing to sign a one-year deal with LA and then extend uh, You know, after that where his AAV could go up considerably? Now, of course, there would be a massive risk because what if things go south or sour with those two sides? I don't think that would be the case, but uh, there is, you know, that's the most recent uh file from Elliot, uh, who is down there with you in Nashville, Huss. Uh, let's just go through this quickly. Uh, the Kings already have $46 million invested in 11 forwards and needing contracts for four RFAs, including Velarde. So if you insert uh, Dubois for that, I mean, they right now have, I think, $9 million in projected cap space, according to Cap Friendly. Uh, Dubois is looking for a deal somewhere between uh, 8.5 and $9 million, maybe even 9.15. I think that's the Barzell number that is tossed around. So, I mean, that's why, you know, a guy like Ayafalo would be included. There's been some talk about maybe a Victor Arvidsson. Uh, he only has one year left in his deal, whereas Ayafalo has two. Uh, you know, I'm not sure about the other pieces on the Kings side. I would imagine that that second rounder would be involved, Huss, that 54th overall this year. They don't have a first rounder in 2023. So, uh, those are the pieces that we've been hearing about. And, you know, on the Jet side, yeah, I mean, I reported, I think Jansen Harkins would be someone who makes sense to be in the deal, just given his scenario. And what I just laid out for the Kings, I mean, Dubois would be their 12th forward under contract. 
Harkins would compete for a, you know, probably a fourth line role and add a close to league mil, minimum salary uh, would make sense. And, you know, if it doesn't work out for him there, he would be, you know, placed on waivers and available for other teams. But I think that it's actually a good fit for him, given the speed that he brings to the game. I think Todd McClellan uh, might be able to find a place for him. And if you're the Jets, the reason why they would be looking to move Harkins rather than have him, I mean, didn't look like he fit in with the Rick bonus plan last year. And he's a guy who's on a one-way contract cuss. So uh, given the financials and the fact that the Jets are probably going to be in a situation where they're buying out Blake Wheeler in the coming days, whether that's a direct buyout or through it, through a trade where they're retaining 50%, uh, moving out a player that would be making close to a million dollars who isn't part of the team's plans, that makes sense on that front as well. So uh, could there be other pieces? Of course. I mean, until this deal gets to the finish line, uh, other things could happen. There could be twists and turns, uh, given the drama that has been surrounding the situation for the last year <laughs> or so. Uh, but that's the best we have uh, right now uh, when it comes to LA. And when it comes to Montreal uh, swooping in late, I mean, my understanding is the Canadians have not made an offer that has moved the needle for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, could that change with there being the threat of Dubois actually uh, ending up in another city rather than waiting until uh, UFA status? Uh, you know, of course that's a possibility, but uh, to me, Huss, we've talked about this before, unless Kirby Doc is part of this process uh, coming back from the Montreal Canadiens, I think they're much better off going with a package involving Gabe Velarde as a centerpiece. Yeah. Now, now, Ken, you know, just and obviously there's still a lot of people coming in. There were some weather issues that prevented people from getting here either last night yeah. or earlier today. But, you know, I've spoken with some people here and certainly yesterday and over the weekend, we saw a number of reports that almost intimated that the framework of a deal is done. And now it's time for the Kings to figure things out when it comes to the contract to make it all come to fruition. And then, as you mentioned, Elliot Friedman today said that he doesn't didn't get the sense and this was i guess as of late last night around the, the 10 of 10 p.m eastern when yeah. he was recording 32 thoughts with jeff merrick that it was his understanding at that time that there still hadn't been um permission given to it to talk contract i know you've been working the phones i mean as we get going live here just after one o'clock winnipeg time do you have a sense at to, to where things at? I mean, there's no point talking contract if you don't have a deal yet. I mean, what, what, what's your sense of all of that right now this afternoon? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I had gotten a similar tip in the morning on Sunday that we, uh, Elliot and I, were were chasing around, and uh, you know, Elliot obviously came to came to the conclusion through his reporting. Uh, that that permission had not yet been granted. Now, could that have changed at some point today? I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, in his, on his uh, availability uh, with Matt Marchese today on the Jeff Merrick show, I, I don't have an understanding that that has changed. Um, Pierre Lebrun has been reporting something similarly, same with Frank Cervelli as well. So, again, uh, these are sometimes delicate situations, Huss, right? I mean... Uh, obviously permission needs to be granted before an extension can be discussed uh, in terms of the framework. So uh, it's my understanding. I don't have any informa new information that would suggest that permission has been granted. Uh, now, having said that, that could have changed with one phone call here. And uh, let's just put it this way. Uh, these teams are not exactly, uh, you know, once they've changed their mind, if they get to that point, they're not exactly putting us on speed dial to say, oh, by the way, we're moving this deal forward. <laughs> so, um I think we're waiting patiently as, as well. I mean, some people are waiting impatiently. I understand that completely. Uh, but I, I don't, although I have a column ready to roll. Uh, How, many virgins? Particulars. How many versions uh, of that column are I'm done, gonna, Ken? Yeah, I'm going to say I don't, I don't have the Montreal version uh, written. So I would require quite a bit of uh, extra work if, if there is a late pivot in this development, developing story here. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, I do. Th Here's the other part of it, too, Huss. I mean, do I think that the deal gets done before a Wednesday? Yes, I do. Um, but the wrinkle in that plan would be that if it is now just a matter of the Kings and, you know, that's the offer the Jets are comfortable with, if that is the case, since the Kings don't have a first round pick, now, all of us, I'm not saying the deal would get put onto the back burner because that's not the case. But unless the Jets are acquiring a first round pick for Dubois, our artificial deadline of day one of the, of the NHL draft 
is not entirely accurate, except maybe if the Kings have some other ideas there as well. But that's not just, let's put it this way. Both teams, if they can get this deal done, they want it done as quickly as possible. It's a complex situation. Uh, I don't get the sense that announcement will be coming imminently, but I do think those two sides are inching closer to a uh, marriage. Uh, and sorry, I should have added as well. I mean, I know you talked about the tweet. I mean, in my head, Hus, I'm not saying that the rights to Jonas Corposalo have to be part of this deal, but if you're Winnipeg and you think you still may be getting to the point where you may have to move Connor Hellebuck, uh, who spoke to my colleague uh, Luke Fox uh, yesterday at the uh, awards avail in Nashville. Remo, throw that up in the chat if you can at some point. Um, I think Corpus Salo will be a goalie of interest for the Jets, whether that's on July 1st or if somehow they could get uh, you know, early early negotiating rights in a deal like that with Dubois. I think that Corpus Salo would be on the Jets' list of targets uh, that's a personal view. I loved how he played down the stretch. I like how he played with LA. And if the even if the Jets are looking to go to more of a tandem-like situation, Corpus Allo, when healthy, is a guy that can give them, you know, 45 to 55 starts uh, quite comfortably. And I think he would be a guy who would fit in quite well with the group with what they're trying to accomplish. So uh, I do think it happens sooner than later. And Hus, as you were talking about earlier before I came on, that, I think it starts the domino effect for sure. Uh, we still expect that there will, you know, with Wheeler probably not going to be part of the organization, you know, certainly beyond June 30th, uh, whether that's a buyout or a, a flat out trade and some retention there remains to be seen. But so, you know, we talked about the four, the uh, quote unquote core four, meaning that those guys were part of the core for a long time. Uh, once those two moves are made, then I think things will pick up on the other front. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, but from my understanding is that there has not been a ton of movement with those other two players. Now, the fact that all those people are gathering in Nashville, uh, I would think that those in the goalie market, uh, suggesting that the goalie market is somehow saturated right now because there are a lot of quality people there. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. If a team is in the goalie market, they want to acquire the best goalie available on the market. And that person is Connor, you know, probably Connor Hellebuck. Uh, by all accounts and not just because we've covered him the most since he's entered the league Huss. Uh, he 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 will get plenty of buzz this week after the Vesna is handed out this evening uh, and I would imagine that uh, you know folks are going to be doing a lot of uh, you know research on what the cost of acquisition might be well yeah, just term, uh, quickly just yeah. on, on heli um because yeah. No, as I mentioned, I mean, listen, and this is sort of the the time and place that we're living in right now. I mean, the Hellebuck's been a member of uh, six or seven different teams over the last couple of weeks, but <laughs> he, in fact, is up for a Vesna Trophy tonight as a member of the Winnipeg Jets, which we should not forget. However, I, I do wonder, um, you know, with the reports, which I uh, certainly believe that he said that his next contract won't be here, that sort of forced the Winnipeg Jets to seriously consider moving him right now. Um how much is the this this Dubois saga, if you want to call it, the back and forth, the work that's being done in Dubois? How much is that has it pushed Hellebuck's situation to the back burner, um, or are these all multiple balls in the air? Because one of the things that we have talked about in a situation that the Jets find themselves in, where they might be trading some significant pieces at different positions, um, the return on one deal could basically be tied to what you're getting in another is because you know what your needs are going into next season. Yeah. I mean, I would, would never say it's, you know, I would say it's more to your point of multiple balls in the air. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we talked about before, I mean, it would be similar to when the jets were trying to lock down. I think Dustin Bufflin and Andrew Ladd, I don't think those things were happening in a vacuum and one at a time uh, as it turns out. So uh, it's just been interesting be you know, again, and a lot of the people, is it, is it, a, is it a fact that not a lot of teams can afford what has been reported to be the contract? No, I'm not going to say demands, but what Connor would be looking for in his next deal would be similar to what Vasilevsky got in his deal, which is 9.5 in a income tax free state. I mean, does that mean he wouldn't take eight in the right situation? Uh, or does it mean he only wants 10.5 or 10? I mean, we don't know that, but uh, Connor was very laid back in his discussion with Luke yesterday, uh, saying he hasn't thought about it. Now, do I think that Connor Hellebuck hasn't thought about his future? 
No, I think that Connor Hellebuck enjoys his time off, but he definitely has given <laughs> some thought to his future, uh, even though he is leaving the majority of those things to his agent, Ray Petcal. Uh, you know, he said right now I'm a Winnipeg Jet, and yeah, that's accurate. Right now he's a Winnipeg Jet. Could he start the year with the Jets? Us? Of course. It's, he's under contract to the Jets, and uh, the Jets' best pathway to a playoff spot probably involves Connor Hellebuck unless they get blown away by an offer for either a first line center or a comparable number one goaltender. Um, but until that happens, uh, you know, their best option is Hellebuck. Now, again, if you're, if you're a team like New Jersey, no one's showing their cards, us, right? I mean, even though yeah. we're not going to be, you're not, you're not in Vegas, you're in Nashville. Uh, you'll be in Vegas next year. And I hope that I'll be there with you once that gets official. <laughs> Uh, but right now, nobody wants to show their cards. And what we've been hearing, and I know that you would know this from being on site, what are people in Nashville saying? They're not overly excited about the free agency class that's upcoming. And what I'm not <laughs> limiting that to goaltenders because there are some good goaltenders in there. Looks like Aiden Hill is coming off the board uh, and sticking around Vegas, as my colleague Elliot Friedman reported yesterday as well, at just a shade under five mil. Now, Freddie Anderson's out there. There's some other options like Corpus L that we mentioned. But if you are a Stanley Cup contender and you are looking for a goaltender, Connor Hellebuck is going to be on the in the radar and on the sites for many teams. And you know, whether that we've talked about Pittsburgh and some other places as well. It just is a matter of what are people willing to give up to try to get him and what are they willing to pay him on that next deal. So uh that's what we're waiting for on that front. I mean I don't have any intel on that. I think that it will be picking up steam this week. Uh, and I do think there will be plenty of interest in Connor Hellebuck. Now, do the Jets think that they can somehow make all the trades around Hellebuck and suddenly convince him to maybe stick around for a deal in that nine or $10 million range? Hey, let's not rule that out either. But I do think that these two sides are probably also eventually going to be heading for a, you know, a split and that will come in the form of a trade in all likelihood. Uh, and that leaves us with Shifley. So, yeah. With, with, with all this talk about Dubois, less about Hellebuck right now, I'll be honest. I've been talking around to the folks that I have seen around here and I know we've been yep. monitoring what everyone's saying. There hasn't been much about Shifley at all. Um, are you hearing anything? And if that is the case, um, are you surprised? Yeah, right now it seems to be fairly quiet around Mark Shifley, but as we talked about, I think, on Friday, I don't think that that will remain the case uh, throughout the course of the next few days here. Um, does some team blow the socks off the Jets with an offer before round one uh, happens? This is the thing for me, uh, Huss. I think that the Jets are most likely to get a first-round pick uh, if in a deal for Mark Shifley. Now, it also could be possible in a deal for Connor Hellebuck, but... Um, I don't think that the futures elements are going to be overly, uh, you know, at the forefront for either one of those players. Now, do the Jets want a second first round pick in the in the draft that is considered to be very deep? Absolutely. Uh, but I would say they're more likely to be looking at, you know, given the teams that we've been discussing, I think at the forefront that has to be the Boston Bruins and Detroit Red Wings, the Jets would probably be more likely to acquire a goalie if dealing with either one of those teams, um, you know, whether it's Vili Huso or for Boston, I'm not sure if it would be Swayman or Allmark. I mean, there's been lots of talk about Boston in the last couple of days trying somehow to get Krug back there. I mean, they, they have some cap issues. Uh, does moving out a $5 million goalie make more sense to them uh, than you're bringing in Shifley on a $6 million deal? Now, the thing for me about Detroit, Detroit has more money available for the next part of this equation, the years following where Mark wants to be paid and, and, you know, to be a, you know, elite player. So that's where it's complicated for me. I mean, there's going to be other situations, you know, does Pittsburgh, what does Kyle Dubas have in mind? I mean, I think that most of the players that the jets have available, including the two that we were discussing right now, I think Hellebuck and Shifley would both have some appeal and fit with what Pittsburgh is trying to do in terms of remaining a contender uh, during the final years of this Sidney Crosby, Chris Letang, Evgeny Malkin era, but they don't have a lot of pieces in the prospect pool that uh, would fit what the Jets are trying to accomplish in terms of the retooling here. So I think things, all to say, I think things will pick up on the Mark Shifley front. And the thing that we've been hearing too, like once Dubois is off the board and once Lindholm is off the board, 
Now all of these teams who need center help are going to be looking at their lists and saying, oh, let me see here. Oh, there's Mark Scheifele, uh, 42 goals last year. Oh, and prior to that, six consecutive point-per-game seasons. Now, of course, that player is going to have appeal on the marketplace, especially if there's not a lot of options in unrestricted free agency. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that all unfolds here in the next little while. But uh, I do think that talks, all, all to say I do think things will yeah. pick up on the Shifley front. But Hus, I mean, you know, as we've discussed uh, yesterday and, you know, as came into the... Uh, a few interesting messages for me that came in about Shifley. Uh, a lot of people around the league would not be surprised if he starts the season on the Jets roster. And I don't see that as posturing. Um, I, I do think that there is a legitimate possibility that Mark Shifley starts the year in Winnipeg. Uh, I was a little bit lukewarm to that previously, Huss, but uh, I do think that if some of the other big time changes do occur, uh, I could see Mark Shifley starting the year. Uh, we know he would be very motivated uh, in terms of getting that next deal to be a big ticket deal. Uh, it's going to have to be the right starting deal year means the that Jets. he would be a better I, candidate for an extension. I'm not sure. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm not going to go that far on the extension stuff, but uh, listen, I mean, if the if they were, and this goes back to some of the other trades that have happened with the Jets in the past as well. Uh, yep. Like Dubois, for instance, <clears throat> if there's not a good enough offer that yep. makes sense for Kevin Shevel, they have to say yes, they're not doing it. I mean, they're not doing no. it just for the sake of it. And you don't want to trade an asset for 50 cents on the dollar. Kenny, listen, we just got a minute because we're going to bring in yep. Hammer. But I did Sounds quickly good. want to ask you about uh, interesting. Travis Sanheim was apparently part of this Philly uh, St. Louis trade. Yeah, that's not happening right now because of uh, Tory Krug's no move. Winnipeg has been mentioned. Um, just thoughts on Sanheim, eight-year deal, six and a half million dollars, and what a fit and a cost might be like for a Winnipeg if uh, the El Cornado was to come back to his home province. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the reports, and you know, does he make sense on some fronts? Of course, he's from Elkhorn. He is on a eight-year deal at six point two five, and you know, if he plays the way that he did two years ago, he's definitely worth that. But uh, you know, my my hesitancy to say yes, the Jets would be all in on Travis Sanheim has nothing to do with the person. It has everything to do with what we've been discussing for the last 14 months. Where do the Jets have a surplus of players? On their left side D, and yeah. most of those guys are puck-moving <laughs> players. So I don't see bringing in a puck-moving player as being a top priority for the Winnipeg Jets. Now, would they have some cost certainty with him? Of course they would. Um, you know, given his age, you know, 27 years old, does an eight-year deal make sense? I mean, I mean, it can make sense on some fronts. Uh, Travis is a great person, high character guy. I just don't see that as being a pro. I, I think we're at a time where the Jets need to be moving lefty out. So I don't see bringing one in as being a front burner issue. Had they discussed him previously? Sure. I don't see that moving to the front of the line in terms of things getting accomplished. Do I think he'd fit in here? For sure. Uh, under no circumstance do I think the Jets would entertain moving the 18th overall pick for Travis Sanheim at this stage of the game. Uh, nor do I think, you know, again, I've mentioned Colton Pareko previously, Huss, uh, you know, in the printed in the printed word and on your show. Uh, I would think that the Jets would be looking to get more of a player like Pareko, who's under, you know, seven more years of his deal. He's got a no move and too, right? Yes, he does. But I mean, the thing with Pareko is he is a six foot five guy who plays a physical game. So what we know, the Jets are trying to change the mix on their back end. So uh, puck movers always welcome, but I don't think that bringing in Sanheim changes the mix of their defense. Yeah. Core. It gives them more of what they already have. And I would say that Travis's best skill set are skills that are also provided by guys like Declan Chisholm and Vili Hainala at entry level prices rather than at $6 million. So uh, I don't, I don't see that as being a, a huge, like I said, I think he'd be welcome here and he'd fit in. Well, I, I just don't think that, you know, again, and Danny Breer is not giving him away, even though it looks like he's trying to get out of the eight year deal based on his age and maybe not lining up with when the rebuild might be over for the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, but sure. I think it's more likely that he would end up, you know, 
I think it's more likely he ends up in a place like St. Louis or or in another marketplace. But. See how that one uh, that one all comes together. Hey, For dude, sure. uh, really appreciate you jumping on with us early. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch up a little later on post Wednesday to. Uh, see how everything shakes down. Obviously, we'll be following at Weaves World for all of your reporting and everything else. Uh, thanks again for doing this. And yes, we do miss you here next year, guaranteed. We need to get the entire band together on the road. Yeah, have a good uh, have a good visit with my man, Hammer. I'm going to just uh, slip into the green room here and keep my headphones on. Right on. Thanks so much. There's Ken Weeb. Give him a follow at Weeb's World, and you can check out all of Ken's takes and reporting on this over at sportsnet.ca. Just before we bring in Hammer, Big shout out to our friends at Vita Health Fresh Market with uh, seven Vita Health Fresh Market stores in Winnipeg and the online delivery at myvita.ca. Uh, great prices on natural organic supplements, beauty products, groceries, Winnipeg's largest selection of local products too. Overhead garage doors. Make an appointment or get a free estimate by calling 452 2700. You can also visit them at wallacefences.com or pop down to their showroom on Lawson Road off of Keniston. Uh, fellas, if you need to upgrade that wardrobe as we head into wedding season, and not that we want to think about fall after September, after summer, but it is coming around the corner, get on down to F Apparel. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. 15% discount for wedding parties. If you're in one, talk to them about getting the guys done up at F and taking advantage of that deal. Uh, bottom line is, Go to F Apparel, 190 Smith Street. If you'd like to find out more online or make an appointment, you can do that at F. That's E-P-H apparel.com. And big shout out to our friends, Nick and Nikki DQ. We got some 30 degree temperatures in the future for Winnipeg. No better time than the, the nice blizzard season and taking advantage of that. One of four locations with those great summer blizzard flavors. DQ Northgate, DQ Polar Park, DQ St. Anne's and DQ Niverville. All right. Let's get to our pal Jeff Hamilton from the Winnipeg Free Press. Dave Pagnotta of the fourth period expected to join us live here a little bit later on in the program. Hammer, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, a hectic day, which we we're hanging with you guys down here, but uh, I know you've been busy following all of these stories over the course of the weekend. Uh, just get, get me your sense right now as to what you're hearing and where things are with the Winnipeg Jets, starting with Dubois, but... Um, as well as the other players that, you know, have long been rumored to potentially uh, have their days numbered in the peg. You know what, Huss? I think what we've seen over the last 24, 48 hours here are absolute strings being pulled from both sides. I see this as a, you know, I, you know, I, you don't say, <laughs> you don't say, you know, I, I think this has been a, I think, you know, I think this is whether it's been a part of the Jets moves or if it's just what benefits the Jets. But once you started hearing names like Velarde with I have follow mixed in, that's when I started getting text messages from people who were being like, this stuff stinks. Like this is, that's a, that's an incredible haul for the Winnipeg Jets if they can do that. And so the question is a lot of them, it, it just didn't make sense to a lot of people I was talking to why those names, people, guys who apparently have no idea, you know, they would be on the move, why they would be out in public like that. And by so many different reports and, this is kind of an opportunity for the Jets to tell you, look, Montreal, if you want this, this is what it's going to cost you. This is These are the names being floated out in L.A. Up your ante. Give us something that we can actually say yes to. We all know Pierre-Luc Dubois wants to go there. We know this has been a long time coming. This, to me, is the Jets not so subtly, you know, essentially telling the, 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 the Habs, who I think, I think a lot of the story is being underplayed here, is Kent Hughes is under a lot of pressure. He's under pressure to sign Pierre-Luc Dubois. This whole idea you can have him in a year, you know, that might have been true a little bit before, but that that's not feeling all that true right now with the potential of 
Pierre-Luc Dubois seemingly willing to sign a long-term deal somewhere else. And I think as much as that, you know, again, seemed like a plausible possibility for the Canadians, I think the pressure is on internally from a lot of executives that see a, a French guy in Pierre-Luc Dubois being the face of their franchise. You know, if they miss out on that, I think there's going to be a lot of disappointed people and Kent Hughes might not have a job in a couple of years. Like, that's where I think the pressure is coming into play. And that's where I think the Jets might be getting savvy here with this idea that this LA deal is, uh, you know, is going to get done because you also hear other reports about how they haven't started talking to the LA Kings about a long-term deal, you know, that the Jets haven't granted permission. Well, that's, that timing seems absolutely fantastic for the Jets as they try to push here towards the draft and essentially tell the, the Habs that this is, this is where things are headed. So, you know, I think this is fascinating. I'm not saying that it's all smoke and mirrors, the LA Kings deal. That's very likely a possibility, but I think, uh, I think this is an opportunity to really send a message to, to Montreal that if you want Pierre-Luc Dubois, um, up, up your ante. As for the other guys, I mean, I think they're in the rearview mirror. I'll, I'll piggyback off of off of, uh, off of what Kenny said, and I think they need this Pierre-Luc Dubois piece to drop uh, before they start focusing on things. But I think there's a lot of potential suitors for, for guys like Connor Hellebuck and Mark, Mark Shifley. I mean, Mark Shifley seems to be the guy, I think, you know, I don't think he, you know, st- signs a, a, an extension with the Winnipeg Jets, but he seems to be one of those guys that has the potential to maybe, you know, get something or stick around. I don't think that's going to be the case, but, you know, Connor Hellebuck's a guy who I think wants to be in the States. I think, you know, a lot of rumors, obviously, to New Jersey. There's, you know, he. I think he'd be a good fit in Vegas if they could if they could bring him along. Like, I think there's, there's potential options for a Connor Hellebuck, but I, I think – it's going to be tough. I think the Jets are slightly concerned of what the return is. I think everybody's expecting a massive return with Connor Hellebuck. And just when with, what, with what we've seen in the market with goaltenders and especially in the way teams are utilizing goaltenders and the price tag that's being attached to Connor Hellebuck, I think a lot of teams you know, are maybe nervous and don't have as many dance partners. But I think this is going to be an absolutely exciting week here, uh, and it's been a long time coming. Yeah, the, the Hellebuck. Um, I mean, here's the thing about Helly. Um, there's two th- two parts to it. First of all, you've got to figure out what the uh, what the the cost of acquisition is, but then there's the contract. And you know, I was talking with a few people this morning in and around, and I think there certainly is a an expectation that you know teams would be willing to part with significant assets to get Hellebuck. And as great as Hellebuck is, and you know me, I, I, I'd be the biggest Hellebuck backer. I, I feel that, you know, he is as reliable as there is in the game. He'll you play 65 games a year. Guy never gets hurt, all that. You're still talking about signing an eight-year extension, if that is a max deal, to a guy that will be 31 years old when this kicks in. And um, that does give uh, – some, well, put it this way, a plenty of pause for thought, I'm sure, around NHL front offices, even with the incredible bar that he's set here in Winnipeg over the last number of years. Absolutely. I mean, and that's, I think that's the tricky part. And I think that's maybe the surprising part that something hasn't been done already, because that's a lot of pieces of business for the Winnipeg Jets to handle. And although we've seen Kevin, Kevin Sheveldayoff handle these kind of situations effectively, and, and, and in some cases, you know, very much under the radar and delivering in trades, right? I mean, um, is that something that, you know, is he being extra savvy here? Is there going to be something that's, you know, do they have options for for all three of those guys? And then obviously the, you know, what they what they possibly can get or uh, for Blake Wheeler or what that, what, how that situation will play out with the potential of a buyout there as well. But uh, it's just, to me, it seems like a lot of business to happen over over a short amount of time and something's got to give. I mean, you can't be giving all your mental attention to, to three things you have to be prioritizing and you know the Pierre-Luc Dubois thing is a priority for the Winnipeg Jets because in all likelihood he's probably the one that warrants the most return especially with his willingness to sign a long-term deal so that's got to drop soon you'd imagine and 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 then you, you kind of wait because you know I think there's a lot of players especially in that first round of this draft I mean um, that's where things get really interesting right I mean what if what if Montreal gets to pick number five and the guys that they wanted uh, you know, or all of a sudden are, you know, are, are gone or, or, or they're all, you know, they're not necessarily scrambling at five, but the guy they wanted is, is off the table. I mean, is that a potential piece to be traded on the draft floor uh, potentially for a Pierre-Luc Dubois? That's the only way I can see the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade 
going into the draft. I, I, uh, other than that, I mean, I, I just don't know why a deal wouldn't get done, especially with all the reports that are coming out. And then you look at, you look at Connor Hellebuck, um, you know, as you mentioned, I mean, his legacy is in, in place here, but I think there, I, again, there's a lot of people who are expecting big return for him, big, uh, you know, teams to, to shell out the money, but I just, I, I don't know. I think that's a way to, wait and see kind of approach but uh you know these guys are on the move they're all the you know they can't have that many reports about guys wanting to be somewhere else i think it'll be fascinating if any of these guys are here for training camp but it just feels like it feels like that's not going to be the case and these these next this next week here is going to be a pivotal part of uh making sure a new era is coming in well you know what I, I, I listen i mean i think that you know we're here there all the attention is on nashville and in particular the winnipeg jets i think it would be a real positive for the organization if they can get this business done to their liking and move on. Um, but I do also subscribe to, I mean, there are some teams that I think feel that the Winnipeg Jets are in, you know, a bit of a, a, a position of weakness, if you will, and might not be giving them the value that they feel some of these assets are worth. Now, listen, I don't think that they're going to say, Hey, we're just going to run it back and we're going to have these guys through all year and, had let them leave as free agents. I mean, I, 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 I that's not happening. Yeah. However, I do think that, you know, especially for a team that apparently wants to be more competitive than maybe some um, would, would think at, at what cost, um, you know, if you, if you had a player like that come back, I mean, listen, I have no doubt that Hellbuck would just go out, do what he does all the time, play well, win games. And, you know, and then you see what, you might be able to get on the trade market at some point next season or at the deadline at the absolute latest. But I'm not sure that that is in anybody's best interest, to be honest, the player or the team, really, when you think about, you know, everything that would happen around that and the conversations that, um, you know, there've already been enough of those conversations as to what should or needs to happen around here for a long time. It does yeah. seem that this is the week to make some of those happen, but uh, I'll say this about Mark Shifley. I mean, I just have not heard, um, and correct me, I mean, maybe you have, but I mean, I've been asking a ton of people around here, are you hearing anything about Shifley? And it, it there just hasn't been a lot of traction on that. Now, to Ken's point, maybe as we get through closer to the, you know, the, you know, the picks going on, clarity about Dubois and Elias Lindholm, maybe all of a sudden that does open up some few more suitors for Mark Shifley, but um, it's been pretty quiet on 55, despite the fact that this is a guy that scored 42 goals last year and has a well-established reputation of being a guy that puts up points on a regular basis. Yeah, and I mean, even just to piggyback off what Kenny said, I believe, you know, wholeheartedly that that as far as the, the main targets, if you're a team, you're looking at Pierre Dubois before you're looking at a Mark Shifley just because of age and, you know, maybe skill set and, and, and what he brings to a team. Lindholm from, from Calgary, obviously, is another main target. And then maybe you start going towards Mark Shifley um, if you don't get those guys. Because, like you said, I think anybody's willing to take a 42 two goal scorer. I mean, um, teams need goals. You know, I wonder if I wonder if a team like Philadelphia wouldn't be of interest there, right? I mean, um, you know, would that be a potential uh, you know, a, a potential target for, for them. I mean, he's a guy that can score goals. They need scoring over there. Um, there's some nice pieces over there. A couple of advisors and scouts that I've talked to in the past are just absolutely obsessed with Tyson Forrester and what he brings to the table there. They call him the number one prospect in the NHL. You know, could a deal be swung over there to try to, you know, bring that guy over here? Um, you know, who knows? But I, I do think there's definitely potential for him to go. I just think that, that, you're dealing with, I think those pieces will happen. I think they're not, you wouldn't, and I don't even want to suggest an afterthought because it's not an afterthought, but when your attention is all on Pierre-Luc Dubois and you're getting down to what will be, you know, critical pieces coming back, especially if you're talking about an Afello and, and, and a, you know, a Velarde, you're talking about retooling, right? You're talking about pro possibly getting better um, even, you know, than you would if you were had Pierre-Luc Dubois, I think, in that trade. So that's, you know, I think your focus is on there and then you're still listening. You're still seeing what the value is for Mark Shifley. But I think those pieces fall afterwards and I don't think they're necessarily draft dependent. However, they could certainly be Mark Shifley and, and Connor Hellebuck uh, could certainly be a piece to, to move up um, or to affect the draft, whatever that may look like. Hey, let, let's talk about just get back to the Kings because... Uh... I mean, obviously, there's a ton of stories that can take us in a bunch of different ways. But as of right now, what we believe 
is that the Winnipeg Jets are farthest down the line with the Los Angeles Kings. And, and listen, I've been a guy that for months has been saying, you know, what a home run would be is to get a young player with extended team control like a Quinton Byfield. Well, Byfield, we haven't heard a lot of his name right now, but Gabe Velarde is a very interesting player. I mean, he still has four years left of team control. He'll be an RFA, so we will need a new contract. Just had a breakout season. And even I have fouled that has two years left on his deal. Um, you know, two years is two years you got a season more, and then potentially you're moving on or extending him. Um, but what do you make of Velarde in particular as being the centerpiece of a deal? Um, and what that would look like for the Winnipeg Jets if Dubois, of course, is gone and both of those players, but specifically Velarde's here for the better part of the next three, four seasons minimum. Simply put, you could put Velarde on your top line. You know, you could put him, you know, whatever that might look like. If if Mark Shifley's still with this team, you know, him at center, Kyle Connor on the wing. I mean, you, you could, you could, you could have a, he, he can play in your top six and he brings those years, right? And, and he, he brings not only those years in contract, but the expectation he's just, he's trending in, he's a young enough guy that he's trending in the right direction. And we've talked on your show in previous weeks about the Jets identifying guys who've established themselves in the NHL and are progressing. You could see them taking that next step with more opportunity. And I think that's where, that, that's where he fits. Um, I have follow man. I mean, the, the, the way I, the way he's being described to me as a brand antenna with, with better hockey sense, which, which to me or better offensive upside, which to me is an incredible gift for this team to put alongside, you know, Adam Lowry with a, you know, with um, you know, on that third line for sure. Um, and so I think you have, I think, and then you have Morgan Barron on that, on the other line. And then, so I think it gives you a chance to put Niederreiter on your second line. So it starts balancing out. And while it might not look like a juggernaut, lineup and it's certainly when you look at the same kind of leadership and and you know potential there that you you can easily sell this is not a great team but it's not much of a different team and might even be a better team than last year um especially you know obviously Pierre-Luc Dubois is a great player he played well but down the stretch I mean we weren't seeing the best of him um also the other thing with Iofello which I find is interesting and people have suggested this to me um, the Jets are uh, for, have an interest, from what I understand, in the in like a Francesco Pinelli, who's a young guy, who's a centerman, who's you know kind of up and coming, doesn't have any NHL experience yet, but he's a six footer, twenty year old, uh, picked in the second round in twenty twenty one. Um, and so, you know, when you start asking for that guy, you maybe get an eye follow who has only a couple years left in his deal. So, you know, I think there's a lot of a lot of pieces to work out here, a lot of, you know, back and forth. I think what we're seeing here is a commitment from two sides to want to make a deal. Now it's about ironing out those fine details and at the same time applying pressure because it's not like the Jets are going into an exclusive relationship with the L.A. Kings. If some other team wants to come along and scoop them up, you know, knock, knock the Montreal Canadiens, they're going to be listening and offering. And in fact, that's probably part of the play here, but there's at least an interest in the LA Kings to do something, to get a guy like, like Pierre-Luc Dubois. There's probably an interest from Pierre-Luc Dubois to play there. He's obviously on one of his lists of five or six teams that he submitted. So now the pressure's on the time's ticking. And finally, there's at least some action in favor of the Winnipeg Jets, because for weeks, if not months, it's all been negative about the Winnipeg Jets, about how they're screwed, about how, you know, they have these guys, but they're not going to be able to sign them. And every week was a new headline about someone wanting to leave town. This is finally something I think is working in their favor. And we'll see if that can play out in their favor in the next couple, couple coming days here. Jeff Hamilton for the Winnipeg Free Press. And, and, and you know, while we're at, I wanted to do this, but I mean, I think you kind of had a pretty good synopsis of where things are at right now, in particular of two players that are rumored to be part of a potential package coming back let's fire out the why not question of the day for our friends at not auto corp over the waiver Levy Gilvery into the chat if Dubois was traded and the, the centerpieces of the package is Dubois going to the Kings and Gabriel Velarde and Alex Iafalo coming back how would you feel about that, uh, that how would you grade that return if that in fact was let us know uh let us know in the chat um re, uh, I thought you were asking me <laughs> yeah, well, no, you just sort of said, listen, it, it, just as we're doing this uh, right now, Jeff, um, Frank Saravelli, Elliot Friedman, both reporting in the last 15 minutes that Taylor Hall is going to be going to the Chicago Blackhawks. I, I can't say I'm surprised. The fact that they're getting Connor Bedard 
I, I think they need to, to get some legitimate NHL talent to play with Connor Bedard this year. Yeah. So Taylor Hall is, is that that maybe speeds up their level of aggressiveness to get a bit more competitive, but your colleague, Mike McIntyre, just putting this tweet out a minute ago, as we've been talking, Connor Bedard will get a former heart trophy winner and a former number one overall pick as well as a uh, Jets division rival accelerates the rebuild. Then he says, speaking of Winnipeg, Shifley has been connected to Boston in trade talks and the Bruins just cleared out some salary. Interesting development. I mean, pure speculation, but the Bruins have been the one team that we've heard that might be an interesting landing spot for Mark Shifley. And the fact that, you know, they could be without Bergeron and Krejci, we don't have clarity on that. And now Taylor Hall on the move. I'm not sure that doesn't maybe at least increase chances that the Bruins and Jets might engage in some significant talks regarding 55. Yeah, absolutely. It could also be Lindholm. Could be any of anybody else who's kind of on the on the target list, right? I mean, it's it's it it, it is interesting in the fact that they're clearing out space. Um, they're probably bringing somebody back in. Obviously, that's a team that is aging. I mean, they've had Pierre Luc Dubois has been connected to the Boston Bruins, and how um, you know Mark Shifley certainly has been, and and uh, particularly under the context that he would benefit from that leadership in that in that Bruins locker room. So yeah, that would certainly be interesting. And and those those teams are are putting themselves in positions to make moves. And and just to go back again to my comment that was piggybacking off, off Weber's comment, um, you know that might be. They, they might be suitors for a centerman, even if they don't get their number one target. If Mark Shifley isn't their number one target, maybe he's their number two target. Um, again, just creates another, another potential landing spot uh, for anybody who has high marketed free agents like the Winnipeg Jets. Hey, Hammer, uh, did you have any, uh, and again, I, I realize that, you know, a lot of this and, you know, the Sanheim, there, obviously we've heard a lot about this deal that hasn't happened because of reportedly Tory Krug's no trade clause between the St. Louis Blues and the Philadelphia Flyers. See, it's not just the Jets that sometimes get hosed because of the no trade, but it sort of speaks to where Philadelphia is right now. Um, but I know it was, I believe it was Anthony Sanfilippo reporting that Winnipeg has had interest in Travis Sanheim. Listen, is he a talented young player? Yes. Is he signed to an eight-year contract? Uh-huh. He's from Manitoba as well, which I think would be uh, would uh, would make sense. Ken, on the other side, said, you know, there's a lot of things to like, uh, but in this situation for the Winnipeg Jets, with all the left-handed defense that they have, uh, it, does that make sense? And I certainly agree with him that there is no way the Jets should even consider getting off that 18th pick overall. What do you make of uh, Travis Sanheim's potential availability and fit with the Winnipeg Jets? I think the Jets go after a Travis Sanheim or their interest in him would be good, but they'd have to send pieces out on the blue line. Like, a, I wouldn't be surprised. And now I'm not saying that it's going to happen or that it's likely, but I wouldn't be surprised if like a Brendan Dillon was a, was, was a throw in piece on a trade, right? Where a guy who, you know, who brings that toughness, stability. I don't think you want to be the Winnipeg Jets and lose kind of your, you know, beefier guys, your, your more physical players on the blue line. But there are, there are, you know, I just, it's more of a compliment to him as someone who might be, he might, might be a piece that other teams are, are wanting to have. So there might be opportunity to find, you know, there might be some opportunity in the blue line space in the blue line. But the thing is the only way I see that being happening for the Winnipeg Jets. And I brought up a, uh, you know, a player's name and like a Tyson Forrester is I think you're only bringing on that contract. If you, if you can either dump something onto them that, you know, um, that you want to get rid of. And I don't even know if Blake Wheeler would be enough. Um, and I'm not suggesting he would be that piece, but, you know, take that whole contract or you, you, you'd want to have a guy that, um, you know, I, you, you, you just wouldn't just, you wouldn't just take on a guy with eight years. I don't think it's a good deal. I think the jets would want something um, in, in return, like a, like a Tyson Forrester. Again, I don't think that the, the, the flyers would do that trade, but why would you sign an eight year guy, a guy to an eight year deal and then want to trade him? You know, that's a long commitment for the Winnipeg jets to bring in. To me, it makes some sense, but I don't think it makes a ton without getting a bit of a sprinkler. Um, if you're going to take on that contract, uh, Jeff Hamilton of the Winnipeg free press with us here on Winnipeg sports talk. Of course, we're live in Nashville throughout the week for the NHL draft presented by cool bet. Going to hook up with the cool bet guys a little later on to find out what's going on with all of these draft uh, odds. Uh, Jeff, just, I mean, we've spending so much time focusing on Dubois 
and it sounds like the return for Dubois, the ask is, you know, pieces right now that are under team control, but a little more developed. Do you think the Jets make any inroads in um, adding picks? Whether I mean, would it be great to get into it with the first round? I think that would excite a lot of fans. I'm not sure what the cost is to do that. Would that be part of any of those deals? Um, but do you think that the Winnipeg Jets may get into the mix for uh, potentially another player or another pick or two when it comes to the uh, the first little uh, um, you know the first few rounds? Well, yeah, absolutely, I do. Like, I I think that if the Jets are actually dance partners with the Montreal Canadiens, and that seems to be the case, I think that number five, you know, that pick is 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 potential to be to be given. You know, as, as a piece, I'm not saying it's going to be, but if they feel the pressure and they feel like that's the one piece that they could get and they can celebrate on draft night with signing Pierre-Luc Dubois to an eight year deal and whatever, then I, you know, I, I don't think that's a bad trade. I mean, Pierre-Luc Dubois, if you want him to be the face of your franchise and you, and again, I, I prefaced it earlier in the, in the interview about, about, you know, it, it's gotta be a guy that I think if they're not, you know, wanting at that point, if he gets taken before, I think there is some movement there, some potential for that. So, um, but, but also, I mean, I think there's potential to trade up, you know, what those pieces might look like, who knows, but I, you know, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk about this draft, about how heavy it is and how, how great it is in the, the first half, essentially the first 20 picks, 15 to 20 picks in the first round. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Jets didn't have that as potential. I mean, we talked about this, I think, last week, that if you can, if you could turn it into a, you know, a Boston situation a few years back and, and lean on what I would argue is a better scouting staff or at least a better track record, if you could get three guys, you already have 18, you're going to get a good player there. If you can get a couple guys in those, a couple more guys in the top 20, whether it be high up or, or in the mix, I think you could redefine your team in a few years. And, um, you know, again, that's just another option, but I don't think with, with wh where the Jets want to be next year and then the coming years to have a, to have a retool that you're going to be racking up, up uh, you know, a, enough picks to, to be competitive, um, you know, in the next couple of years, right? Yeah, no doubt about that. Hammer, um, listen, you know, uh, we've got Dave Pagnotta from the fourth period jumping on with us live here. So uh, maybe in a day or two, I mean, obviously our focus is going to be uh, all on what's happening here in Winnipeg, but I, I, I did want to get just a quick 30 seconds from you on uh, what the heck happened to the Bombers last Thursday. <laughs> did not see that one coming, and it had been a long time since we'd seen anything like that to a Western Division opponent at home. Yeah, that was a beatdown for sure. And, you know, credit to the BC Lions. They looked like they owned the Winnipeg Blue Bombers <laughs> playbook. Did. I mean, particularly on defense. And, you know, that was the big storyline heading into that game was the number one offense, won a team that was averaging 43 and a half points a game against a, a defense in BC that was averaging seven and a half against. Well, I think we clearly saw who won that and BC Lions defense rode, rode that game to a 30 to six victory. Um, I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to go down to be a, you know, a blip in the, in the road. Um, I, and I kind of feel sorry for, for the Montreal Alouettes who, who are feeling pretty good after starting the season two and oh, and I get, get a, get a cranky bombers, uh, regardless of their, their, their on home turf. Hammer, thanks for doing this today. Keep your phone on. Uh, we might, uh, might need to reconnect, uh, depending on what happens over these next couple of days, uh, heading into round one and the, the rest of the week here in Nashville. Thanks so much for doing this, buddy. Sounds good. Always a pleasure, my man. Take care. Great stuff. There's Jeff Hamilton of the Winnipeg Free Press. Hey, speaking of the Bombers, they are on the road. Canada Day, I believe, in Montreal, and then back next Thursday. Of course, before the game, you got to get down to the Princess Auto tailgate zone. Two hours before the game, 350 pop, hot dogs, $5 beers. It is the place before to be before all Winnipeg Blue Bomber home games. And, of course, Princess Auto, proud sponsors of the Bombers and WST. Got to give a shout out to our friends at Consolidated Supply. Busy right now in the summer as the leaders in irrigation systems, artificial turf, and golf carts. And the exclusive club car dealer here in Manitoba also have other great options for your property, including hot tubs and amazing outdoor kitchen options, as well as small engine parts and repair. Pop by and see them at their showroom. Open to the public at 1395 Niaqua Road East or find out more online at cte.ca. I know many of you are waiting to see who the Jets are getting for Dubois. What happens with Hellebuck? Well, when you want to get your new jersey of the newest Jet player, you know where to do it. And that, of course, is the ultimate sports superstore, Royal Sports at 750 Pemina Highway. Uh, might be a few Jet jerseys on sale there, too, to be perfectly honest. Uh, listen, when it comes to um, 
fan gear. There is simply nothing like Royal Sports. Jets, tons of great bomber gear right now. Your favorite NFL teams for coming up in the season. And of course, I'm sure they'll be getting those draft hats in right away as well. Pop down and see them for yourself at uh, our great sponsors of ours and our good friends, Royal Sports 750 Pemina Highway. And hey, on Wednesday night, if you're looking for a place to get out and watch all the festivities with a few pals, uh, there's no better place to watch the big game or the big night when it comes to the draft than your local Boston pizza, ice cold schooners, world famous BP wings, gourmet pizzas, and the latest from the BP feature menu. If you're staying in, of course, you can always order online at bostonpizza.com. All right, well, what a pleasure it is to welcome in our good friend, David Pagnotta of the fourth period, who, uh, let's just say, my friend, there's been plenty of uh, Winnipeg Jet fans that have been refreshing their feed and your feed as well. Uh, first off, how are you doing? It's been great to see you the last couple of days. Yeah, you too. Um, I've been good. I'm warm, I, I think, oh, is the best way to... It's a moist heat. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> very, very damp. Um, it, it, the humidity just smacks you in the face as soon as you step out. But uh, it's been good. It's been it's been busy. The awards are tonight. Um, obviously, all the draft stuff and everything going on. Big trade a couple minutes ago um, already. Taylor Hall going to Chicago. Yeah, just quickly give us that. We were just kind of talking about the reports and what that might mean for the Bruins and Mark Shifley. But uh, Taylor Hall going to Chicago, that was yeah. not one we'd heard a lot about. Certainly speaks to, I think, Chicago knowing that they're getting Connor Bedard. Uh, let's get some legitimate NHL players to play with this guy. Right, right. and they're, and they're going to need it um, because kind of need people to play with. Um, but they have the cap space to do that, right? So they're, they're, they're taking advantage of that. Boston taking advantage of Chicago's cap space. This is a pure dump. Uh, so the rights to Nick Foligno are also heading uh, to Chicago. Again, just more of a roster. Um, it's a two for two. There's a couple of young prospects um, that are going back to, to Boston. But this is purely a, a dump. Um, just to get uh, him off the books, his six million off the books. He's got a cap hit of six this season or this coming season and next with two years left. So dump the salary, give them more flexibility to make some other moves, and uh, kind of go from kind of go from there. Uh, how much? Like, do you think they'll be uh, quite aggressive the the rest of the way? I mean, I'm sure this is just Taylor Hall, but it does speak to maybe a new direction a little quicker. And that's what happens when you win a draft lottery yeah. with a guy like uh, Bedard. Yeah, I mean, they, they still want to maintain their their rebuild model, I guess. Um, so I'm not really anticipating them, you know, going out there and, and, and uh, speeding up their rebuild process. But you're, you're right, as you said earlier, you need some players to play with this kid. And if he's going to make your team out of the hop, well, you've got to make sure you've got the right guys to, to insulate him with. So... You know, having Taylor Hall there, the, the likelihood, the anticipation that he would probably play on the left side with with Bedard. Um, they kept the Fennessee So I think they're going to, again, weaponize their cap space a little bit to add some more veteran presence to this group. Uh, all right, let's get to what everyone in our chat room wants to know. A Philly St. Louis? Je Je yeah, the Philly St. Yeah. Louis trade. What's up with Travis Sandheim? Um, Pierre-Luc Dubois yep. to the Los Angeles Kings. You and the guys at the fourth period have been all over that. Uh, t take us through the weekend and where things uh, are right now as we uh, get into Monday afternoon. So it, it sounds it sounds like, from what we've been told, that the, the parameters of the deal um, are done. They've been agreed to what's going back and forth. Um, there's three roster players that are going back to... Uh, to Winnipeg, as, as we reported earlier this week. Alex Iafalo, Gabe Velarde are expected to be two of those three. There's another young um, forward that's also going to head back that was on the roster of L.A. this past season. So they're getting three. Dubois would come the other way uh, with two other pieces, I believe. And Jansen I, Harkins has been one of the guys that's been named, and I know Ken yeah. was just on a little earlier and said he believed that he would be part of a package going Sound, the other yeah. way. Sounds like, sounds like he's there. Um as well as part of this, I think there's another piece, a third piece, could be a draft pick, could be a uh, to offset the roster, uh, could be a, a lower level prospect or somebody that's that's locked in. And I think there's at least a, another piece, I think, of draft pick that's going back as well. But they need to figure out a contract. So if they can, um, Rob Blake, the GM of the Kings, and and Dubois agent Pat Brisson, if they can hammer things out, this should be done uh, in the next day or two. Um, it could be today. Uh, but they have to hammer out that contract. And once they do that, and it's not... Look, brisson has been engaged in this since the get-go, um, but it's not as simple as, okay, we'll give you eight times eight and just call it a day. It, it's all the structure, all the bonuses, how everything's being played out, what type of no trade or no move is he going to get once he hits UFA status, 
and so on and so forth. So, you know, L.A. has been, for the most part, mm, a little reluctant in the past to give out big bonuses, but that's probably going to have to change here with, with Dubois coming in if they can pull that off. Uh, um, one of the things that I don't think, at least maybe just the average fan understands, is the role of agents in mm -hmm. these sorts of deals and in particular, the relationship that and we all think of it all, Brisson and the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. Brisson's pretty tight with Luke Robitaille and uh, the folks over in Los Angeles as well. They grew up together. <laughs> they're, they're good buddies. Um, and Mark Bergevin, uh, who's also there as well. So um, it, it plays a factor. Dubois, I believe it was four, might have been five teams similar to what Kachuk did last year. But there were f at least four teams that he was willing to go to. L.A., Montreal being two of them. The other two, everybody's very tight-lipped on. I, I think New York was one, but I don't know how the Rangers pull that off. Um, but it makes it easier when you've got your buddies that are there and, and whatnot. Now, still, it's business. If they got to tell each other off, they'll do it. Uh, yeah. And they've done that a few times, but uh, then they make up for it afterwards at the bar. But um, it, it does make it an easier process to, to hammer something out when you've got familiarity there. And especially with those guys that have years of it, um, it, it does make that, that process a little bit simpler. Um, but again, you want to make sure if you're the agent, you want to make sure you're doing what's best for the client and, and your player. And then from the team perspective, well, you don't want to get hosed on anything. So you've got to figure that out, too. So there'll be, there, there's been some hardball. I know they spoke yesterday. They were supposed to have uh, conversations today to try to hammer this out. We'll see kind of how it, how it goes. But look, the agents in a number of different scenarios, Eric Carlson, for example, um, he's going to get traded. Uh, and his agent is very much in that mix as well, trying to assist along that process. Um, we'll see kind of where that goes. He's just sitting back waiting to see how Mike Rear can navigate that. Well, you know what? We'll circle back to Carlson because uh, I think there's some really interesting things happening outside of Winnipeg, but obviously we're here in Winnipeg right now. And there's a lot yep. of people wondering, this Dubois trade is not happening in a vacuum. It's not just the team at all. Whatever happens with Dubois, there's Connor Hellebuck. There's, more. Yeah. there's Mark Scheifele. <laughs> uh, I think it's pretty clear that, listen, if they find a taker for Blake Wheeler, they'll trade him. Otherwise, yeah. he's getting bought out. Yep. Um, but w uh, what's your sense of, of, of a Hellebuck situation? Because uh, this guy is as good as it gets right now. He is a workhorse. He had just turned 30 years old, although he's yep. got one year left on his deal. Um, do teams want Connor Hellebuck? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but... You know, what is the price for him right now, as well as the uh, the willingness to sign what would be presumably, at least the demand would be a max extension. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's that's the biggest key in all of this. You know, Dubois just turned 25 a couple of days ago. Hmm. He hits an eight year deal. He's what, 30. He just th turned 30. He'll be he would be 31 when that deal kicks in. Right. So if it's eight years, that's taking you to 39. 39. Yeah. So I, I don't know if there's much of an appetite for that, to be honest. You're probably looking at a three to five year extension would be my guess, unless the AAV drops. If it drops considerably, you spread the money out, you make a few extra mil, makes the cap hit a little more palatable. But with the cap going up, not next season, the season after, um, starting to make that incline, it makes things a little bit easier, but again, do you are you going to give Connor Hellebuck nine million a year, times three or times five? And teams that are you know that have the cap space to do that kind of stuff, that's what they're navigating right now. So we know New Jersey, we know Pittsburgh's been connected, Buffalo, and a few other teams. But the the biggest sticking point here is what type of contract you're going to get for Connor Hellebuck, and that's also going to affect what's coming back to Winnipeg. It doesn't necessarily have to be a goalie in the mix. Um, but if you get Connor Hellebuck now for the next, let's say, six seasons minimum, you got to pay for that. Um, so the assets have to come back and be and be considerable. With what they're getting for, if the Dubois deal goes through, it makes things a little bit easier. Um, coming, uh, they're getting three forwards, as I said. So it makes things a little bit easier now with the likelihood, as you talked about, buying out Wheeler, and then potentially moving Shifley in, in another type of deal. Um, you don't necessarily need a goalie back for Hellebuck. Maybe it's the Shifley deal. Maybe you got somebody on free agency. Nobody's supposed to be talking now. Everybody talks uh, to everybody. So they'll, they got their options, I'm sure. Um, but it's, it's really what, what is the best package that you can get back in this? The, um, you know, we were I was chatting with Dennis a little earlier. I mean, New Jersey has been a team yeah. that, and it, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, this team seems to be ready to ascend to truly being a, a contender mm -hmm. um and you know what they've had their 
number one overall picks already. They've sort of been there. How? Um, what do you think the appetite for New Jersey would be um, when it comes to draft picks, prospects, or players on? Because the weirdest thing about, and again, it may be from my perspective, is how adamant the Winnipeg Jets are that they're not rebuilding. And yeah. listen, I get it. I mean, I think the people's, when they think rebuild, they think of what the Blackhawks are doing right, right. now. I mean, Philly's blowing everything up, right? Yeah, so. exactly. So, I mean, that's not going to be the case. However, I do think Winnipeg, you know, looking at sort of moving on from one era to another mm -hmm. um, would be would be well, it would be in their best interest to try and get another early pick in the draft. Um, where's the New Jersey situation right now? Would that be something on the table if they did go down the road of acquiring Connor Hellebuck with or without the extension? Right. Um, well, I think I think they're pretty adamant that New Jersey would want an extension in place, well, however it may be. Well, mm -hmm three years, five years, whatever it is. Um, Mackenzie Blackwood would have to be part of that if for to offset some money a little bit, and then the Jets can figure out what they want to do. So that's the goalie, but it, not he's not going to come in and be the new number one. Yeah, he's, he, he ain't know. Connor Hellebuck. No, no <laughs> not even close. Uh, he's got a long name, but no, not the same. Um, but that that's more the money offset um, to make things to make things work there. But they look, they've got cap space, and they have to get Timo Meyer signed now, but they have a lot of assets they can move out. And they paid a pretty big price for, for Meyer, um, but they still have a pretty full cupboard in terms of their prospect pool and, and some of the young guys. Now, they're not trading Luke Hughes um, by any stretch, but they've got a couple other defensemen that they, that they could potentially dangle. They've got a lot of depth up front with some of their younger kids. Um, that's the type of move that I would anticipate where you're getting back a lot of different assets um, that can have some type of immediate or near immediate impact on your club. And you talked about the core era kind of shifting i mean you've got connor you've got morrissey you've got perfetti and so on so there, there's there's a good base there without question now it's how do we fill these other pieces when we're kicking everybody out hey this I, and i'm sure some devil's fans that they were listening to this would like be going this guy's insane is there put it this way are these guys untouchable after the season that they had last year dawson mercer uh, I mean, listen, you're getting a Vezina Trophy winning goaltender. Yep. That would be the center, but I wonder, it, would he be, is that a non-starter? And I mean, the other guy, I have to bring his name up uh, because they've got a pretty solid blue line. And then they've yep. got this Simon Nemec who seems to be a young stud just waiting to come in at 19 years old. Yep. I mean, would that would that be hang-up territory when uh, Kevin Chaldeo says, what about this? Yeah, well, San Jose wanted one of those two guys in their deal for Meyer originally. and And Fitzgerald was like, Hard no. Cool, <laughs> cool story, buddy. No, I'll talk to you later. Um, I would be, I would be shocked. I'd be shocked uh, to to deal either of those two guys with the, with the season that Mercer had. He really likes it there. Um, he fits in well with that group and in that room. So he had 27, 28 goals. I mean, yeah. It was... Yeah. And just, and, and I don't know where. Pierre, Pierre Luc Dubois numbers, frankly. <laughs> right. Right. So I, I don't know if that's, I would be, I would be surprised if, if I've got a pick between the two and this is just me kind of speculating it'd probably be mercer more so from an availability standpoint um but i would be surprised if either of those two guys are going anywhere yeah no i uh i, I have to ask but i think i'm sort of with you as <laughs> but well they, but they have look they've got if you look at their roster and I, I obviously don't have it in front of me right now but um they've got a deep forward core as well with young talent so you could see certain players especially with those additions that they've made recently um you, you can see some of those guys being you know, a little bit more available kind of moving forward. Obviously, you're not getting the Brats and the and obviously Meyer and whatnot, but, you know, you have some other pieces as you're pulling this up. You know, you're looking at certain guys that have, you know, Sarah got a lot of RFAs, I can tell you that yes, much. Yes, that, that's true. <laughs> and all are uh, eligible, so that, you know, whatever. But, you know, you have Bastion, you have uh, 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 McLeod, excuse me. Uh, so they have, they have some pieces and some good young kids as well that are still in that system. Now, prospect pools a little deeper on the blue line for them, but they've got some pieces that you can kind of slot in here uh, to make something work. But again, these are RFAs that are... What the, Just while we're on the Devils, before we move on, what are you hearing about Meyer? So it's an eight-year deal, um, but the numbers are are the issue. So they don't want to, if you, you see the numbers there, you know, Jack Hughes is the top guy at eight million. Yeah. Meyer wants closer to nine and has been pretty adamant about... Ah, the old internal salary cap that we hear so yes. much about? Yes. <laughs> but then if you look... Well, uh, Dougie Hamilton's making nine and a quarter. So mm, you got to weigh things out. I, I think I think Meyer will get more than eight. Um, 
but that's what they're that's what they're kind of hammering out right now. And and like Fitzy and his group, they knew the number when they acquired him. They had talks with Claude Lemieux, his agent, before they made the deal and said, "All right, we'll we'll reconvene later on." So it's not like this came out of left field for them. But you know, again, you got to play hardball once in a while. And, and as much as Claude and, and and you know Tom know each other and this and that and have familiarity there as well, this as we were talking about earlier, this is you know you got to. You got to lay, draw the line somewhere, and that's what both sides are really doing. Um, uh, the Calgary Flames are, uh, you know, sort of, <clears throat> unfortunately for them, sort of ended up in a similar situation to Winnipeg yeah. in that there's some guys that have said, "Listen, uh, we're not resigning, so yep. figure it out." Um, what are you hearing about? And uh, what a way to go into a new GM gig for Craig Conray. Here. Yeah, there I you feel... go. Welcome to Calgary. Right. I feel bad for him. Um, I feel bad for the whole team, quite frankly, um, with with what's going on. But look. Um, whatever transpired in the season obviously left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And I can tell you, I, I know a couple guys really well on this team. Um, and, you know, if they didn't make certain changes, they were next in line to say, get me out of here. Um, so they made the change behind the bench. Daryl Sutter's out. Um, you know, they bring in their new guy who's also very familiar with this club. You know, Conroy is as well as the AGM and been there for a while. But it's just... It's a tough situation. Like, DeFoley is likely getting moved. Hannafin's likely getting moved. Toronto's kicking around on both of those guys, by the way. Um, I know I can tell you that they want to try to keep Lindholm. They're going to try to convince him. They met about, let's see here, about an hour ago. His agents and, um, and, and, and Calgary's management brass. So they're trying to see if they can make something work there. Um, and Backlund, look, he's, he's 35. He's, you know... He, he loves it there, but it doesn't sound like they want to give him, you know, too much term, especially after now that he's at this age. Um, I can't imagine that's as urgent, uh, you know, with the guy that's going to be 35. I mean, in fact, it might not be the smartest thing to do. You could probably have a little yeah. bit more time waiting on Backlund. But, I mean, right. Lindholm, I mean, that's, Lindholm that's, is, that's is such a key guy. And, frankly, he's been criminally underpaid. I mean, he yep. hasn't been making $5 million. So he is and he deserves to get paid. He'll Should be, they be willing to do that? How, how key is, I mean, as we talk about a guy like Mark Shifley, yep. never mind Dubois, but Shifley's future, how much is that tied into the potential availability on the market of an Elias Lindholm if he says thanks but no thanks? Um, well, it certainly affects it. And, and all of a sudden, now you get Shifley as a potential plan B um, because Lindholm is is regarded that much that much more. Um and again, as you said, ridiculously underrated. I, I don't think he, oh. gets, he he doesn't get enough credit for what he brings to the table as a, a two way guy and can put up the numbers. Um, but as I said, they 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 met roughly an hour ago, so we'll see kind of if anything comes out of that. But they they're trying really hard to convince him to stick around. That's priority number one for them. If it doesn't happen, then yeah, you go back out in the market and you see what's out there, and he he jumps back to the top of the list in terms of number one centers that are available. Um, that that are out there. So certainly something to keep tabs on um, over the next, I'd say, 24 to 48 hours um, as Conroy continues to navigate. I mean, like we said, Toffoli and Hannafin, but also Dan Vladar is, is out there as well from the goalie side of things. Yeah. And $2 million cap it, I believe, for the next couple of seasons for what he's capable of, that's pretty freaking good. So teams, are, I mean, they're going to cash in on, on a solid return there. And they're going to have to jump around and see what type of deals they can get um, for some of these for some of these guys as well. Yeah, and I guess Markstrom still. I mean, we think about that deal, but it was a six year deal. He's got three years left at six million. Um, but Ladar, with the way that he played, probably ready for a challenge to uh, maybe go and and start. Uh, you know, yeah. at least get get an opportunity to become a starter. Right. More, more in a tandem spot because, of course, well. When Mark, Markstrom struggled, it became the tandem. And I joke about, right. we talk so much about Hellbuck playing so much. Well, you know when you have a tandem? Because you don't have a guy that's doing what he does 65 games a right. year. Right, exactly. And you have to you have to decide. And then we're getting to a point now where everybody's really, con do you go with the number one guy and, and you pay a ton of money? Or do you platoon it and you spend less with two guys? It really comes down to how your roster is put together. Like If you can sustain, like Colorado and, and uh, Vegas these last couple of years, their rosters are so stacked, you can get away with not having a superstar goaltender. Other clubs, they rely on their goaltending. Now, some teams fall into it and, and get lucky, like Tampa, Vasilevsky, and yeah. the rest of the superstars on that group. And obviously, Winnipeg in the last little bit, having you know Hellebuck there and, and a strong roster as well. 
but the platoon situation only works if the rest of your roster is is has all the meat and potatoes to get things done. Vegas certainly had that this year. Aiden Hill, not a superstar, good contract that he's getting now. Congrats to him. Um, he he earned it. Um, Hell of a month. Yeah, really. Yeah, <laughs> not too shabby. Um, all of a sudden, making like nine seven five over two years, yeah, pretty good. Um, but you know, again, they're they're so deep up front and so deep on that back end, especially on that blue. You can get away with it. Same with Colorado last year with Grubauer, and that's why they were willing to let him go to Seattle, and and they brought in um, Gorgiev. So it it really comes down to those types of situations, like going back to New Jersey, they tried to platoon it and see who steals the show. And it worked during the regular season, but come playoff time, nobody really stepped up and was able to do that. So it, you got to, and they have a deep roster too, but you got to still make sure you've got the right guy in place. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we say about those teams that have the tandems. I mean, you got two really good goalies, but neither of them is that guy. And uh, yeah. well, we'll see what the demand for that guy is when uh, we get some, uh, Clarity on uh, Connor Hellebuck's future. Just before we go, you mentioned Eric Carlson. Just quickly yep. touch on his situation. And is there any other team that we or maybe many of the folks in the business haven't been talking about as much that is really intriguing to you as we get into these next couple of days? For for me, well, on Carlson, for me, it's um, trying to figure out just what the what the realistic options are. And, and, like, he controls the process. He's got the full no move. He's told them what teams he's willing to go or not willing to go to. He's willing to go to a bunch, but there's a, you know, a select few he, won't, he doesn't want to go to. Um, it, it comes down to how much is San Jose willing to retain. Mm -hmm. And they weren't willing to retain a significant chunk um, beforehand. So we'll see, or during the season, I should say. So we'll see kind of how this unfolds. He's got an $11.5 million cap it for the next four years. That's a big chunk That's of change. Significant. And they're not eating half. Yeah. Like they're going to eat, they've told teams 3 million ish during the season. That's probably going to have to go up. And again, as I mentioned earlier, his agents involved trying to help expedite this process at some point. I haven't heard anything as close. I know he hasn't either. Um, we'll see what, if anything kind of transpires over this next week. Um, who would be the most interested teams? I mean, uh, it, do, do, it, are there a number ones that said, hey, we'd love to have them on our club, but yeah. this needs to work out, and uh, we can't afford 10 or $9 million a year on our cap for four more seasons. I know during the season there was the talk of Edmonton. I know Florida had discussions as well, and, and Florida would like to add a mobile guy. Um, probably going to go the free agent route. Uh, I, I look to a guy like Shane Gossespair, the local kid out there, who could be a great fit for, for the Florida Panthers. So we'll see what happens there, but um, it, it's, it's honestly, it's hard. It's hard. Like everybody's relatively tight lipped about the situation. Um, and I've tried to pry Carl as much as I could. And he's like, just leave me alone. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, I think, I think over this next week, we'll probably start to hear a little bit more in terms of realistic options for him. Beautiful. Uh, hey, listen, thanks again so much. Just on the way out. Is there a team that we haven't mentioned that, uh, you know, you're, uh, keep an eye on these guys. I think they might be up to something. Yeah. Detroit. Yeah, and, and and they're sneaky, and Stevie Eiserman will not let the cone of silence anyone man. say a darn thing. Um, but they're creeping around. If you look, if you talk to some other people around the league, they're they're keeping tabs on on Detroit to see what. They Any end. possibility of Hellebuck for uh, the Red Wings? He's a hometown guy. Maybe, maybe. Not that that I really haven't matters. I haven't heard yeah. anything. I think they're more geared to it. Like I know they like Alex Debrinket, and he would love to go there. We'll see kind of what happens there. But they they were in on Konechny. There was an offer that was put on the table by Philly, so just kind of it's in uh, Eiserman's, uh, I guess, court. Um, but we put this out there, so he's probably going to just say, "No, the hell with you guys, we're not doing it." Uh, so we'll 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 see how how that goes. And the Islanders as well, another sneaky club. They're trying to free up some cap space and lose trying to do his thing. David, thank you so much for doing this, man. Always Absolutely. great seeing you. Uh, Me too. Get the. Uh, Tell Dennis to take it easy. It's only the first day of the draft. You don't want to get him uh, unleashed in uh, downtown Nashville. I know. Although I hope I will see you guys later on and do exactly that. Somewhere on Broadway, you'll, you'll find us. <laughs> you know it. Hey, thanks so much for popping by, man. It Absolutely. was great. Thank you, guys. There it is. Uh, you make sure you're following the fourth period and Dave Pagnota. And, of course, our pal Dennis Bernstein as well. Great of Dave to pop by in the middle of a very, very busy day. Um, uh, great stuff, of course. It's WST. We are live in Nashville at the NHL draft. Um, that, that's sort of the the ability to get someone like Dave just to, well, first of all, hang out, kind of talk off air, off the, you know, off the record, uh, but then to have Dave pop by to uh, 
an impromptu made up studio here in the embassy suites. Um, a lot of fun, but Dave's been, listen, that, the, the one thing I'll say about those guys and Dennis as well, um, very connected in with uh, LA and I think a number of the people that are involved in the Dubois sorts of things. So I uh, wanted to make sure we got Dave on and uh, listen, we fig- focused on the Winnipeg Jet stuff, but also so much of what is happening in and around the league. All right, we are going to talk a little more draft. Check in with Jake Bowen Moss from Coolbet in just a uh, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the Gold Ice. As I mentioned right off the bat, it had been a real struggle, uh, and they were down at the bottom of the standings along with the Gary Show score so short Rail Cats, but they did manage to get a big win yesterday and win a series. They're heading back out on the road. Still, lots of baseball left to be played, and that's certainly good for the standings and hopefully turning things around. And it's certainly great for WST fans. If you haven't been out to the Gold Ballpark yet this year, make a point of doing it on the next homestand. You can find out more on all the big promo nights coming up at goldeyes.com, group tickets. And once we get back, we sort of get done with the draft and into July, make a point to stay in tune to our program because we are going to do a WST night out at the ballpark. Cannot wait for that. But in the meantime, make your plans to get out there. Great food, delicious beverages, including, of course, our friends at Little Brown Jug, who, of course, are involved in Craft Beer Corner, and now both generic lager and 1919 available in cans. Uh, For any of you that were out at the What's Golden event on Saturday, that keeps getting better. And, my God, some of the shots of what was happening at the the patio last night, uh, just a perfect summer evening. Um, DJs and more. Um, if you haven't been to uh, a Little Brown Little Brown Jug HQ on William Avenue, make a point of doing that. There is no better time of the year than get to LBJ than right now and taste everything that they've got going on. Also going to give a shout out to our friends at Aikens Lake. I'm counting down just over a month till we get back out to Aikens. If you're looking for a world-class fishing experience uh, that there's amazing fishing, but even better hospitality. And you can be on the water in less than two hours from the city of Winnipeg, including the flight. That's Aikens Lake. Find out more online at AikensLake.com. And uh, you can also hit them up on Twitter as well to check out availability for this year or even into 2024 at Aikens Lake. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, is Jake uh, kicking around here yet? He absolutely is. Now, I, I have to... Uh, I have to thank both Jake and Pat for sending me over the latest on Coolbet. Now, for all of you guys that are back there right now, you will have no problem checking out the NHL draft odds. However, with uh, me being in Tennessee, geo-blocked, uh, we've got it up. But my guy, JBM, Jake Bolandos from Coolbet, uh, joins us. Uh, and, of course, Winnipeg Sports Talk at the NHL Draft presented by our great sponsors at Coolbet. Jake, what's up? How was your weekend, man? I saw you uh, spending a little bit of time at the Dome. Hold on a sec, Jake. We got you muted. We're going to get you uh, back on that. That's probably in our end. Lots of very interesting technical issues with uh, this. Although, frankly, shockingly, uh, considering where we were an hour or two earlier, there was uh, <laughs> it has gone very, very well. We had an in-person guest and more. Uh, all right, try again. Can we hear you now? Well, now. There we go. There we go. Um, right on. How was the uh, – I mean, we haven't really talked any Blue Jays at all, and I will say this. they uh, you, you wanted the sweep. It looked bad. Romano gives up the homer in the ninth inning, and they lose. But uh, – Bounce back. Vladdy's getting a little bit, a little bit hot. And I know you were there for a couple of games just before we get into this. How was the, uh, how was the weekend at the, at uh, the dome? Oh, hold on a second here. We're going to request. We're going to, we're going to, that's me, Jake. I keep switching you from your AirPods to your other one. Okay, oh, it's, yeah, I'll take my AirPods out. I think you're good now. You're good. Now. Yeah, yeah. No, I messed it up. Okay. Again, you know, life on the road. There's uh, the, the CTO has had a lot going on right now, but uh, I will try again. Uh, you caught some baseball. Jay's got a couple wins, and Vladdy's hitting bombs again. Yeah, Vladdy, Vladdy looks very much back. I don't know if it's just the series and it was the A's, but obviously the two homers hit some really hard balls when I was there. Um, he's looking, He's looking a lot better. I don't know if what one day of rest does for him. 
uh, last Thursday, but all of a sudden he's now hit two homers at home after hitting zero for up to this point of the season, like 70 games in or wherever we are, 80 games in. And now the Jays are in a wild card spot. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be in the city now. I don't know if you can see the new background behind me, pretty white walls, but uh, yeah, I'll probably walk over to a game this week. Uh, Sam Fran in town. Belt gets a little revenge. Uh, listen, I loved, I saw on the ground, the uh, developments, the, uh, the, you know, into the big city for Jake. Um, and that, uh, listen, it's awesome. I mean, you know what? I, I will say this is, I don't know, you're such a big fan of, you know, all the teams there. I mean, but the, to be there, I mean, it's a pretty fun place to be in the summer. The bottom line, when you got a team like that to be able to get down to the ballpark and, uh, and hopefully see them really get on a run in the second half of the season. Very fun and a, very, a lot more convenient than when you went and met me a couple months ago and you had to take the train in and everything that goes around. All that being said, uh, and you know what, Dusty and I will get it to this on the lock shop tomorrow. Um, but the Edmonton Elks performance... You know, I, I I got on the plane. They had just they had just done a pick six. They were up by seven. We needed them plus six and a half. Next thing I, thing I looked, they went from 14-7 up to 33-14 down. And uh, fortunately, that blasted a partner parlay that was looking quite good. But Jake, I know the focus for you and the team at Coolbet this week is on the NHL draft. And just before we get to some of these numbers, uh, draft betting is so weird in a lot of ways because a lot of it is based on reports from the most respected people in the business the nba draft last year was one of the most bizarre i can remember in a long time because when we did the lock shop in the morning brandon miller was plus 240 to go number two four or five hours later he was then minus 160 and ended up going second overall uh, I can't imagine what goes behind the scenes into putting together these odds that we have right now at Coolbet for the second, third, fourth, and fifth overall picks, as well as all the other props as to where these young players are going to be drafted on Wednesday night. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. I think Miller at one point, like two or three nights before the draft, was a pretty hefty favorite. Then, like you said, he swung back to being more favorite as a third overall and then swung back again to be the favorite of second overall, which is where he ended up going. Yeah, as some reports came out. Um, people were wondering if the comments he made about Paul George being his GOAT was like <laughs> trying to throw off the, the stench of Charlotte because Jordan still had play in the uh, in the whole draft process. And yeah, it, it was a whole thing. I mean, obviously, there's it's all just speculation, but... Yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't envy uh, our bookmakers when stuff like that's going on. And one minute he's huge favorite, next minute he's an underdog, and then he's a favorite again. So, yeah, some crazy stuff. And I guess we'll get to some of these picks here for the NHL draft. Well, exactly. And I mean, listen, everyone knows that Connor Bedard is going to go number one. So uh, we won't even, we won't even entertain the Victor Wembayana minus thirty three, thirty three, three bets. Connor Bedard's going number one. Adam Fantilli, though, he is the consensus number two pick. Just talking to a couple people today, they they, they assumed that they had to say, yeah, who's it going to be Fantilli? But Pat Verbeek's been giving out some weird vibes and maybe teams just do that to screw with people at this time. I, I have noticed, though, that that number's gone from, I think it was minus 688 last week to minus 500. And it is Leo Carlson, who's the favorite for the third overall pick, that is plus 365 to maybe pull a bit of a shocker and usurp Fantilli as the number two overall pick. Yeah, listen, I uh, right before I hopped on here, obviously, you know, we had a little switcheroo. Uh, I did my little NHL draft crash course to try to uh, try to give you the best information I could find. And listen, it seems like Fantilli is the guy at number two. Obviously, the, the odds do reflect that. But like you said, there's been a little bit of movement. Like you said, where it was, you know, a little higher than what it is now, but he's still minus 500. Um I guess if you're if you're if you're worried that maybe it's not going to be Fantilli, Carlson's your next best option because you look at any further down, and we're talking four-digit numbers on a lot of these guys below it. So maybe you're looking for a little value, and you're thinking, you know, Fantilli, they're cooling off a bit. It might be Leo Carlson. That might be a guy to go at plus three sixty-five right now to go second overall. Yeah, and I mean Carlson is minus one seventy-five is the favorite to be the third overall pick. It really does seem like it's. You know, a two-horse race between he and Will Smith, the two centers. Although I guess Fantilli's there at plus 350. If somehow he was bypassed by the Ducks, you'd assume that he would be taken by the Columbus Blue Jackets at third overall. But here's where things get really interesting, Jake. 
and that's Matt Bay Mitchkoff, the Russian. I mean, if and I've talked about this, and I've asked scouts through the last couple of weeks, if Mitchkoff was from Medicine Hat and not Moscow, where would he be picked? He'd be right up there. Well, he'd be wouldn't be higher than Connor Bedard, but he probably would be a clear number two pick. And there's so much that goes into the risk, especially with what happened in Russia on the weekend. Um, but I have to admit, I mean, Mitchkoff at plus 800 at third, but Mitchkoff at plus 310 for the fourth pick to the San Jose Sharks. I think if there's one intriguing kind of long shot at plus money to take in the first round, to me, it's where the Russian ends up potentially into the top five. Yeah, and that's exactly what Patty said to me. He goes, Mitchkov, uh, he said he said three, I think, to me. But, yeah, you look at it, it's funny. You're talking about the odds when Pat had sent them to now. They've already changed. Carlson now minus 200 to go third. Mitchkov all the way to plus 1,000 to go third. And then you look at his odds to go fourth, plus 310, and his odds to go fifth, plus 260. You look at it, and if you think he's going in the top five, you know he's probably not going number two. So if you did a unit on, you know, Michkov, you know, third, fourth, and fifth, say you did it like, say your unit was $10, you're coming out with some sort of profit there. If I don't have that right now, I guess, yeah. no, because you can still get your $10 back. So at the worst, you'd have a $6 profit if he does go three, four, or five. Um, but there's always that, that matter of, you know, maybe he slips to six or seven, and then you're looking at, you know, you're down three units instead of being down, uh, instead of being up a, cu- a couple. So. Well, the, the other thing about Mitchkoff, um, and in particular Columbus, I mean, Kekalainen, uh, Yarmo Kekalainen has been a guy that has often kind of gone swum upstream, if you will. And I mean, we all remember the line A draft here in Winnipeg or the Matthews draft, as you would call it in Toronto. Uh, third, everyone thought it was going to be Yessi Pugliarvi, and it wasn't Pugliarvi. The Columbus Blue Jockets went and picked Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's a uh, had quite a bit of quite a few mentions on this program as of late. Um, the, the thing is, when it comes to Mitchkoff, is everything that goes around him, the contract in the KHL for the next three years, and uh, very difficult. There is a head to head between Leo Carlson and Mitchkoff. Carlson's minus five hundred, Mitchkoff plus three forty. So, in a lot of ways, I mean, I guess there's a potential that Carlson could still go second, um, which would beat Mitchkoff, but Mitchkoff would go earlier. That is one of them. The other ones, and folks, go to Coolbet if you're interested in these. If you're, I know there's a lot of uh, draft nicks out there that like, you know, perusing the books. Um, head-to-head matchups, who's going to go first? Oliver Bonk versus Mikhail Giev. David Edstrom versus Charlie Strammel. Uh, Brandon Yeager, a guy that has been mentioned potentially going to the Winnipeg Jets at 18 against Calum Ritchie and uh, Samuel Hosnick over uh, Dmitry Simashev. And uh, and then I guess just, Jake, before we roll, um, should point out that, you know, I mean, there's some unique markets for the top five. But, man, I'm counting almost, what, 20 different over-under props for young men as to where they will be picked in the first round. The one that I jumped on, a guy that we in Winnipeg know a lot about is Zach Benson. His uh, total is over-under eight and a half plus 200 to go in the top eight. I couldn't help but jump on that. Um, most of the other ones closer to sort of even, maybe a little bit skewed depending on what the trends are right now, but uh, some really interesting options that uh, can get lost in those props looking at it and then comparing it with every mock draft that's coming out over the next 48 hours. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you're a draft nut, you'd, you're going to want to check this out at the very least. Um because a lot of these guys, you know, they're they're kind of middle of the round picks based on just where their over unders are at. And if you think you have a good read on one of these guys, then you might be able to get a good number on it, right? Like you said, Benson, that's a Winnipeg guy, um, under eight and a half. His rank seems to be high. Sometimes it's just about need, right? Like what these teams need in terms of uh, in terms of the type of player they're looking for. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, but I think in terms of you could probably say for sure he's a top eight player in the draft. It's just a matter of are the teams in the top eight looking for that or are they looking for, you know, a bigger defenseman or w- whatever it ends up being, right? So, yeah, ton of ton of names on here. Uh, I won't go through them all because I'll probably botch a bunch of the pronunciation on them. But, uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, you can either go to all of the NHL draft or the player draft picks is specifically for 
their position over on. Yeah, just I'll mention a couple quickly that are a key. As I mentioned, Zach Benson, uh, you know, his over under is eight and a half. The under, which is, you know, to go between one and eight is plus 200. I had to touch on that one. Uh, Nate Danielson from the Wheaties down the highway in Brandon. His total is 10 and a half. Um, to go in the top 10, basically, plus 125 for Nate Danielson to go uh, 11 or later, minus 167. And then a guy that has been mentioned as, uh, you know, I think we've had a couple guys that have had Oliver Moore potentially going to the Jets at 18th. His number is uh, over under 14 and a half. So you'd want to take the over on that one if, uh, if you thought. But it is all there right now. And uh, Jake, it won't be long. We've already got CFL back into week three, but uh, the countdown is on for NFL training camps and uh, some fun segments with the fellas on the lock shop and here on Winnipeg Sports Talk as we get into NFL season and the Chiefs trying to run it back. Yeah, and uh, DeAndre Hopkins, future New England Patriot, too, is what I'm hearing. So. <laughs> Hey, buddy, thanks again for uh, pumping on, uh, popping on today. I know Pat's going to jump on tomorrow. And uh, huge thanks again to Coolbet for their support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. We wouldn't be able to be here without you guys. Have a great one, man, and good luck with everything. Yeah, enjoy Nashville, boys. Good stuff. There is Jake Bolin Moss. Make sure you're giving Coolbet a follow at Coolbet Canada, and you can follow Jake as well at Jake Bolin Moss. Um, all right, we're going to get Remo in here. We still have a couple things to do. Oh, what I do see. We've got a Cinevoy Downs coming up. I may have to pull a quick trigger on a couple wagers because ASD is back tonight. Live racing tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. post time. If you're able to get down there, do it. You can, uh, nothing like a beautiful night at a Cinevoy Downs in the Manitoba summer. But if you are staying at home, you can bet at hpibet.com. And, of course, you can watch Kirk and Stretch break it all down at 645 on the Assiniboia Downs YouTube channel, as well as tee up each and every race on the YouTube channel throughout the afternoon. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the, the Assiniboia Downs picks just to finish up the program, Remo. But uh, this has been uh, quite the this show, apparently, has gone quite well. Can you give me an update as to... Uh, how things uh, how things have looked. We've uh, been on the air. People are in the chat. We've had a ton of people watching us. Yeah, people are here. We're doing this show. Uh, uh, I'm doing double duty as video guy, sound guy, camera guy. <laughs> the CTO. The CTO needs a bigger staff. Setting up like the <laughs> if you're watching the video, it's like what's Remo doing behind Hustler as I'm like putting up the the sign behind you, letting David in. So I'm just adjusting the camera a bit more so I can sit down. Oh. There you go. There but, we go. But I will say this. I mean, uh, you know, for your and, and I, okay, I'm going to peel the curtain back a little bit. Now, Remus has gotten way better with, you know, managing levels of stress. I think the levels of stress this morning were as high as they've ever been. And yet it was relatively on the Remus scale as cool, calm, and collected as you have been. And lo and behold, this has gone off quite well, including an in-studio guest for the first day. And not, now that we've got one under the books, I think it's just going to get that much easier over the course of the next few days. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how many in-studio guests that we've had here since uh, doing the show. And I know we had Andy McNamara in Vegas. You did Jen Jones and, and Team Mackenzie Zacharias. Yep. Um, and who Reed was there at Pitch Stop. Totally in different the when you're here and not back at home in the normal setup of the studio. I mean, that's, yeah, the, uh, that's the, the key. Yeah, getting this all. I'll put out a picture. Um, I would say follow our Instagram, Twitter, Sports Talk WPG. There's a picture of the story of you and David, but I'll have to have to put that on. But this is, uh, it was stressful. The internet, too, you know, hotel internet. You're not sure what you're getting into well. here. You're not Remus doing. had a battle royal with uh, with Hilton, uh, the the Hilton internet, which apparently has a room. You, you when you get there at the start and you pick one internet, you apparently can't yeah. change it. So there were there were high levels of concern as to whether our regular internet, having not just picked the premium internet right off the bat, would have been good yeah. enough to do it. But um, I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. Yeah. I you know know how to adjust the quality, but yeah, basically yeah. When you sign in the internet, it's like do you want to do the free one that's like good for browsing or the premium one? So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do free one. And I'll upgrade tomorrow when we need it, and like I can't go back and switch. So I'm on the phone with 
Hell ten. I'm on the phone with the friends. That's like, oh, we have premium internet here. Like, what the what the heck is that? So, uh, it seems to be working. Everyone can hear us. I know we had over what seven. We hit eight hundred you know, hear us. Beautiful uh, in chat at one time, which was so cool. So what? Uh, hit the thumbs up. Right now, still at seven. Jeez, listen. Seven hundred. Uh, thank you to everyone Amazing. that has joined us. Uh, for new ones, as I said, this is a little bit of a different show today because we don't have the same amount of monitors and stuff that we do back in the in the home studios, but. To everyone that's new, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are here every day, Monday to Friday, 1 o'clock p.m. Central on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that red button. If you can, hit that thumbs up. Helps us spread it as well. And you may not be aware, we actually started this off as a podcast, although the YouTube continues to grow. Wherever you get your favorite pods, just put in Winnipeg Sports Talk and subscribe, and that podcast will be dropped in around 3.30 p.m. So if you work a regular 9 to 5, you'll have fresh WST content just in time for your drive home, just like back in the olden days. And you might even like the format better than uh, the way it was back on the old AM radio. But we are just starting this week. I mean, yesterday we got in late last night. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was touch and go to pull it all off. But the kid did great, and uh, we're ready to go. Uh, and I'm looking forward to kind of hooking up with a number of, uh, you know, the insiders and people from around the league over the course of the next couple of days. A lot of people coming in later on tonight. Of course, the awards are tonight with Connor Hellebuck representing the Jets up for his second Vesna trophy. Um, we will in all likelihood do the show here tomorrow. I mean, we might do it actually here as well, but what we will be doing is also getting some content from outside of the, uh, of here, as well as, the um, uh, different hours so keep an eye on our youtube channel as well as our social channels for us uh, some clips some other things which we'll try and put up and of course we will be at the draft on the draft floor we'll get a chance to talk to whoever the winnipeg jets draft at number 18 and when kevin shovel day off speaks we will head down to jets hq get that for you as well so um really just starting uh just starting off the week uh, we hit the box where we were able to actually make the show happen today um uh and now remo uh, it's time to uh get out there probably connect with a lot of people over the course of today today um tomorrow i think mike mcintyre will join us and you know i know ken was nice enough to come on early today well ken later on maybe jeff as well i'm sure billick i mean many of our regulars as well as uh, whether we have people come with us live here uh in studio like we had today with dave um or recording some things just before we go on and playing them during the show, uh, make sure to be with us throughout the week. And then on Wednesday, I know the IC guys are going to do sort of a live watch-along stream on their channel. Uh, I think Remus and I will probably join them at some point from uh, from the draft floor. And then on our channel, we'll be doing a bunch of interviews and we'll be posting things throughout the evening. So you can get that whenever you, uh, whenever you want. But... Uh, Overall, so far, so good. We pulled it off. Yeah, so far, so good. It worked. We did it. And, you know, we posted on our, what, our Instagram story yesterday with a picture of us in the car yeah. driving to Fargo. People thought, you're driving to Nashville? How, how are you doing that? No, no, no. We no sleep. No sleep till Nashville, yeah. folks. But, um, but, yeah, it worked. And I'll probably, you know, this is day one. I'll be making improvements. We have other cameras. We're going to add and other stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of tinkering. So <laughs> thanks everyone who's tuning in on YouTube and those on the podcast as well. We don't forget you guys either. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, just quickly, uh, this is a non-sports note, but a travel note. And I'm sure you were hoping to get some of those as well. We had one of the great travel days ever when you consider it. He yes. came and grabbed me. Uh, we left at about 2.15, my place. Our flight was at 8.15. Of course, the highway between Winnipeg and the border is terrible. The minute you get across the border, it's awesome. I think we were at the border for 18 to 20 seconds. We yes. got through, which was always nice to have a quick run through. Uh, and I got to tell you, Direct flight on Allegiant from Fargo to Nashville compared to, even if it was the same price, it was way less expensive. Even if it was the same price from doing the Winnipeg, Toronto, Newark, Nashville, 13 to 14 hour milk run. Absolutely no comparison. The best decision we made 
was driving across the border. And it has given me ideas to maybe working with the Elysian folks on potentially maybe a Jets roadie to Nashville next year with WS tiers or Vegas. I don't know. Our old pal Gary Lawless, Stanley Cup champion Gary Lawless, has done some work with uh, Allegiant in the past. So we may have to uh, fly that up the flagpole and see whether we can make something. By the way, speaking of which, when are we getting the schedule? The NHL schedule? Yeah. We got the preseason schedule. Um, so, oh, yeah, that's week. right. So it's going to be we relatively never, We never even talked about that. That was Friday. Yeah. Was like, yeah, preseason. Three home and homes. Who, who cares? It's preseason. We're like, give us some trades. Yeah. We don't want. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. don't want. Although there was one Jets tweet, us that you and I did want to talk about over the weekend. Oh. That we. <laughs> yes. That uh, you said to me in the car, we need <laughs> to discuss this tweet. Oh, I'll pull it up right now. Let's get. Get the responses. I you get the Twitter. Okay. I'll, I will get the Instagram. Oh, it was on Instagram too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was. This was I, I always wondered like what kind of discussions went into putting this tweet out because there's so much talk about um Pierre Luc Dubois. And as I get this ready, one second. It happened to be uh, it happened to be PLD's birthday on the weekend. And uh here. The Jets wished him as they would most of their players. Happy birthday. Yeah. Now, it might have been good if the trade had happened before that because that, I mean, there, <laughs> there was some fans that were triggered. There were others that thought, well, that's a nice thing to do. And the vast majority of what, yeah, enough with the birthday greetings. What the hell's going on with the trade? Yeah. <laughs> the timing of it was somewhat hilarious. Yeah, they put out this tweet. I mean, the responses... Uh... I mean, they have to wish their players happy birthday. That's fine, but uh, everyone laughing in the com in the comments <laughs> about it. Uh, it was, I mean, what are they supposed to do? Has not wish him happy birthday. <laughs> as far as I know, he you know he's on the Winnipeg Jets roster. So, um, I mean, well done. Well, here, well done, commenters. Yeah, and here's the commenters. There's you still have time to delete this. Right. LOL. Yeah. No thanks. Get him out of here. Bum. Uh, <laughs> and then the human in me wishes you a happy birthday, PLD. The Jets fan in me wishes you good riddance. We want players who want to be here, no matter the size of our city and its climate. Go, Jets, go. Um, was hoping this was a trade announcement. Bye, PLD. We hardly knew ye. Uh, and <laughs> now do au revoir. <laughs> So, anyways, I had I had a nice laugh. Just basically, <laughs> so, happy birthday! I grant you one wish. PLD, amazing! I wish to be traded. From <laughs> Jets genie. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so, anyways, and you know what? Shout out to the social media team over there. They, but, that, you know what? It, they, I don't think they get enough credit. They did such a good job this year. They made it way more fun. Um, it, there's a number of things I think that were much better organizationally last year. Social media right up at the top of the list. And uh, yes, if you do want to have some fun in the midst of all the Dubois drama, you can check out the responses what? to the team's tweet and Instagram post on happy birthday to soon to be former jet Pierre-Luc Dubois. Yeah. I don't know what PLD is doing for his birthday, but we did see him in Montreal. He was at F1. He went to the Montreal uh, CPL league uh, team game with uh, David Savard. So we'll have, maybe he'll be celebrating a new contract uh, pretty soon with a new, possibly a new team. Well, that's yeah. what we're talking about here. 20, 20, 24, seven Dubois. Watch. Does Dubois bank have a suite in Bridgestone that's arena? Also, and wouldn't that be funny if he was there with this bank and then got the word that he's, could it be a Los Angeles King? <laughs> we'll find out. That being said, I mean, you know, if you joined us a little later on, we had some great stuff with Ken, with Hammer, with David Pagnotta here. Um, you know, like like everyone. I mean, I don't pretend to be an insider. I mean, hey, if something falls into our lap, we'll let you know about it. Um, but, you know, we talked about Detroit and Steve Eiserman and the, the cone of silence. Um, Kevin Sheveldayoff and the Winnipeg Jets are pretty close as well on that. I mean, I do think most of this that's come out is kind of more from the L.A. side. Certainly sounded that way, although I thought Ken did some strong reporting with the uh, uh, with the Jansen Harkins news that he most likely would be going back the other way. Um, but it is somewhat of a waiting game, but it makes it fun, gets a lot of people out to the show, and gives us a lot to anticipate for tomorrow's show here 
live at 1 p.m. And then, of course, uh, showtime for uh, all the prospects who uh, are kicking around here tonight. But uh, tonight, again, Remo, of course, it is all about the uh, all about the awards. And I mentioned this at the start of the program, and I know it is tough for a lot of people. We all know I'm a huge Connor Hellebuck fan. Uh, I wished he would have been a Jet forever. It does look like that is unlikely to happen. However, as much as we're all talking about the trades and you know potentially him leaving, tonight he is representing the Winnipeg Jets going up for his second Vesna Trophy. And I got to wish Connor Hellebuck well, though I'm sure he would be... We don't have odds for those at Cool Bet, but I'm sure he'd be a significant underdog considering... I, I think the Boston Bruins are just simply going to run the table with all of these, uh, with all of these, uh, these awards. And frankly, I did uh, take an elevator with Jim Montgomery this morning, although I did not ask him if they were going to sweep all the awards. And I also didn't ask him what the heck happened against the Panthers in round one. Yeah, probably a good <laughs> thing. And I, it's going to make it really sad. Like when they get all these awards, like Jim Montgomery's probably going to be coach of the year. You're going to have what the goalie of the year in line is Elmark for the Vesna. Um, and all that after a first round exit to the eighth seed, um, I think it just makes it like even more disappointing about their season. So, um, I'm curious about the awards tonight. It's always fun. You know, MVP, I think McDavid is going to run away with the Hart trophy, but, uh, I know it's in Nashville, so they're going to have some, you know, a bunch of musicians. I looked through the names. The only one that I really was, uh, was into was Darius Rucker. From Hootie and the Blowfish, I was like, because he's a country guy now. I was like, oh, Darius. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know him. I was pretty pumped, pumped for that. You know what? I mean, listen, like a lot of people. I mean, I wouldn't. Although country music is so huge, I mean, like that is almost pop music in a lot of circles right now, anyways. Um, But yeah, I mean, I don't know a lot of the country stars or a lot of the most popular country music right now. How? Although when you get here, the the level of quality of the musicians (laughs) in this city is unlike anywhere else. I mean, you'll go into a bar and you'll go to, they'll have a different act playing on the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, the fourth floor, you know, and all of them, if you stuck them in almost any other city outside of Nashville, they would stand out as, you know, the most talented person around. It, it, it is really, really cool. And as I say, we'll throw some neat stuff up kind of from sites and scenes outside of work um, on all of our social channels. Talk about it tomorrow on the program as well. Um, and I'll tell you what, I think what we might have to do is uh, I might tweet. Well, if, you, if you're if you looking for our horse picks tonight, obviously there's been a million things going on and this literally would simply be throwing darts. <laughs> oh, I did that. <laughs> I did it during the show. I was like, horse picks, house limit to win. That's our favorite horse, race seven. You're, you're on that? Well, give me, uh, okay, I, I'm going to make two. I'm just going to make two bets today. Okay. Go um, back to that last one. I'm doing uh, It's a Boy. Yeah, that was a good name. Uh, it's four to one. Yeah. Uh, that's in race number one. Okay. Okay. And go to, uh, how about race number three? Race three. Or any of the wit. Did, did you see any of the wit horses? No wit horses. Oh, actually, I'm going to put that. I, I take that back. Horse number one yeah. in race three, Blazing Bow. Yeah. Shout out Bo Bichette, who's been unbelievable. Done. And, and then go to a race five. Race five is. And then I will throw down. I think I remember Living Sky was good. Oh, no. I like uh, Sky Tizzy. Sky Tizzy. Sky Tizzy, number eight in race number five. So, uh, actually, I guess we are able to do that. So, I'll put those in myself now that we uh, we can log in afterwards. But uh, we are going to uh, move on, hook up with a bunch of the other folks that are coming in. I know Rennie's coming in tonight. So, uh, hopefully, maybe we'll have Ren on the program tomorrow. Um, and as I said, as soon as we hear from the Jets that something's happening. Kevin Day off speaking. We'll uh, get on the horse and get down to wherever that's happening. We'll have that for you on our channel as well. Um, and then, of course, uh, we'll look forward to hearing from the general manager of the Winnipeg Jets, whoever they pick first at the draft on Wednesday night on the channel, um, and some more sights and sounds of Nashville, Tennessee, and the NHL draft. Just getting going tonight. Awards is the focus this evening. And then I'll focus on... Uh, Trade rumors around the league, including many involving the Winnipeg Jets. And, of course, the first round of the draft on Wednesday and the rest of business on Thursday. Then uh, we'll be back in Winnipeg on Friday afternoon for the show. Do we have some breaking news to finish up the program? might be a trade. You know what I I realized before? 
we took off for this trip that I'm going to be in person at the draft getting to hear Gary Bettman say live, we have a train to an hour. <laughs> and like, like, I don't know. That's like going to like Metallica and seeing them play Enter Sandman. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I mean, pick I your favorite, big for you. pick your favorite act. Like I thought, oh man, like I'm so pumped to hear him. So there better be a trade. Uh, oh, here, you look, you look at that. See if there's anything uh, lately. Okay. By the way, one other thing that we do need to say, uh, is a big congratulations to the money man himself, money Medlock, Justin Medlock going into the blue bomber hall of fame. Oh, the most stone cold kicker that I mean I can ever remember. Um, Castillo's had a great start to the season, though. I mean he's he's good, but Medlock Medlock changed the 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 level of confidence of Bomber fans yes. watching their team was just night and day from when that guy came here, and of course was a big part of winning the Grey Cup. Um, before we go, let's just do a quick rundown of a couple things. Taylor Hall moving to the Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, Darren Drager reporting that Nick Felino is also part of that trade, although he's a pending UFA, but Chicago is hopeful that they will be able to sign Felino. Uh, and again, one other thing, I know we spent a lot of time talking about the Kings. Drager reported about four hours ago uh, on top of Arpon Basu that the Habs have circled back on PLD it seemed LA was a clear front runner and that may still be the case, but the Habs have re-engaged. And as Hamilton said, when he joined us, there's a lot of, a lot of smoke signals going out right now. And mm -hmm. uh, Hey, listen, from a Jets fans perspective, I don't care if this takes a little extra, I, if you can squeeze a little bit more of one of the two teams to get the best deal, that's what the job of the GMs is to do. Not necessarily to do it immediately as fast as we'd all like, but the sooner, the better that would yeah. be. Anything else? That there was uh, someone said Boston made another trade. Uh, it was pretty minor. The Devils acquiring Shane Bowers from the Bruins for Riley Walsh. That mm. is not exactly, uh, you know. No. Let's get back to talking about Medlock going to the Bomber Hall of Fame. Man, that he was, <laughs> and it was actually I saw Mark Leggio made some uh, field goals this weekend for was it yes. Hamil Hamilton? Hammer. So, oh, nice to him. And the Elks. You know yeah. what? Uh, listen, I was I would have normally got like Dusty or someone on to talk about that. Was very cool. Dusty did the game last night. Obviously, we weren't watching it. We were flying out here. Um, but and this was the one thing that we never had the opportunity to do because of when they shut down our old station. It was in the middle of the pandemic. Nothing was going on. We never really got a chance to get together, even just the guys from the station, never mind with all of our listeners. Um, but they did that. They had like 600 listeners come out for the uh, TSN 1260 yeah. section yesterday with all the fellas and had a big bash. So um, keep an eye on what the fellas okay. are doing out there, though. I know they've got some good stuff going on. Okay, so. someone in chat, people in chat keep rating the Sens are the new mystery team for Pierre-Luc Dubois. I don't know if that's, I'm just going by. Oh, I'm so here for a mystery uh, team. I'm a mystery team has entered the chat. Well, I, I we will tell you this. If something does happen, obviously we're here. We'll be able to hopefully grab a person or two. Uh, I'm not sure whether we'll do a live stream, but certainly we'll try and grab a few folks, fire up a few things on the social channels. And uh, yeah, one thing I know, we'll be all over it tomorrow, beginning at 1 p.m., working on some uh, guests here in Nashville, as well as a few of our regulars with a focus on what's happening around the league, but especially on the Winnipeg Jets. Great job, Reem, making this all happen. Uh, I was okay, I was worried just... that there was going to be a Remo's rant at the end no. of the show today about, uh, about the uh, – selection of our hotel internet but it seemed to have uh, all worked it worked out. out yeah it worked out in a stable which was good but yeah that send i haven't seen anything on that sense of that was just us making someone making stuff up so um be another thing and, and i'll tell you yeah. what <clears throat> it's close to montreal yeah it is, it is close to montreal <laughs> yeah it is close so maybe maybe it is i don't i can't confirm it right now but uh people are trying to speculate needless to think we're not insiders we are uh but we will be reporting on everything that happens throughout this keep an eye at sports talk wpg give us a follow on twitter but instagram as well youtube facebook although i personally don't really use facebook as much uh Anymore. We're on there. We got like two thousand followers. I love Facebook. No, shut There's up, so He's many. Remus, big Facebook guy. I Me, love. I'm more. I uh... only use it for this. I post about. I don't post on my own personal, but I post on Winnipeg Sports Talk and 
There's a lot of good Jets groups too on there that are uh, following our you stuff. You like so. sell like old CDs and buy things on Facebook. You're what did a big I Facebook sell? Mar- marketplace guy. Oh, that that is actually what I use. I'm buying jerseys on there and selling uh, uh, computer equipment. Yeah, <laughs> and you know I actually went I went to look here to log into Facebook Marketplace in Nashville. Maybe I could get like someone selling old Thrashers jersey, not Thrashers <laughs> Predators jersey. Like I get a Mar- Marty Erat, maybe someone's got a Marty Erat lying around they want to get rid of. They don't have Facebook Marketplace in Nashville. So I'm like, what do they use? Hey, speaking of Nashville, just before we go, how yeah. about Barry Trotz? He's not even the GM yet. And he's already made a trade. Ryan Johansson off yeah. to the Avalanche. Uh, and they're eating four million bucks. I think Barry coached him for long enough and had enough of Ryan Johansson. <laughs> well, said, we don't care if we have to eat the money. See ya. Uh, and uh, it, interesting to see, and they've got a, some picks in this draft right now, a very different um, situation sure. for the uh, Nashville Predators. Yeah, seen in the past. They, he's just trying to clear out salary and free up room to be more flexible. He was talking about how no no one has a lot of money, and I think for Colorado, they needed a second-line center. They really didn't replace Nazem Kadri. And I didn't weigh in on the Tory Krug trade. I, it seems all the time these guys like include people with no trade clauses in a trade. Like, why are you even talking about him? He has a no trade clause. Like, why is it on the table? And so they they get it in. They put them in the trade, and then they try to bully them into waiving their no trade clause. I don't know. I think it's such a, I don't want to say slimy, but, I mean, you negotiated a no trade. Like, you think he wants to go to Philadelphia? But he might. <laughs> no, he doesn't want to go to. But, like, why is it? I don't know why it's getting so far along that they're in the trade. The trade is done, and it's like hinging, according to reports, <laughs> yeah. hinging on okay. Tory Klug waving. Like why? Why is it getting to that point? <laughs> okay, that that I'll agree with you. Like you gave him a no trade clause. Why are you? It's like oh, that's fine. He's gonna. We'll just bully him. Like all the teammates. But you could have been better. And then but the, it's all because hey, of you. Listen, you think you're gonna win here? Yeah. We're not going anywhere for the next little bit. Go to. Oh geez, we traded you to Philly. Yeah, never mind. So that one, Plan B. The Ooh. other, the other contract. How about Jordan Stahl getting a four-year deal, age thirty-four, has turning thirty-five in September. Four-year deal, two point nine AEV with Carolina. Yeah, good last for him. year. Last year, good for him. Seven hundred and seventy-five thousand. Really? Yeah. So it's basically a three-year deal. And then oh. he's got that amount for the last one, I guess, to help them spread it out. But oh, that's uh, the base salary. Oh, well done. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you could still do that. 3.45. Well, I guess it's like decreased by <laughs> enough that it's still okay. Uh, I guess there's a signing bonus in the fourth year that basically would put it up to basically $2 million, But uh, Interesting. Yeah. So anyways, uh, stay on top of it, all of our channels, and uh, we will be back tomorrow. And uh, in the meantime, we'll throw some stuff out on socials. Hopefully hook up with a few more of our friends that join us regularly on the show in person. And uh should be a great one tomorrow. And then, of course, Wednesday is draft day. And uh would imagine we'll have a little more clarity on what the Winnipeg Jets are up to by then. Huge thanks to our sponsors that make this happen, especially the gang at Cool Bet. Thanks to Jake for coming on the program. We'll get Patty on tomorrow. We'll see if those numbers have changed. But uh, Winnipeg Sports Talk live at the NHL draft in Nashville continues throughout the week. Presented by our friends at Cool Bet Canada. Thanks to everyone that joined us today. Tell a friend about Winnipeg Sports Talk, how they can jump on with us and subscribe. Check out the podcast and join us tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Time, live from Music City. We'll see you then on WST. Have a great night. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.